Good morning, everyone. Could I welcome you all to the Harrogate and Nesbitt Area Constituency Committee meeting, uh, the 8th of June. Uh, my name is Mark Coburn. I'm Dem Democratic Services Support for the meeting. Uh, the first item of business on the agenda is the election of the chairperson. So please, could I ask for nominations for the chairperson for the committee, please? Could I nominate Councillor Pat Marsh, please? So, so, Opposer, Councillor Broadbank. Do I have a seconder? So I'm happy to second Councillor Pat Marsh. Okay, Councillor Walker. Okay, do we have any other nominations for the chairman? Councillor Paul Haslam. Is there a seconder to that? Okay. Thank you. Is there any other nominations? That's it. Okay. We had the first nomination for Councillor Marsh, so could I ask for... Mark, can I, can I just come in with, with a suggestion here? We've, we've clearly got two very good qualified candidates yeah. for this role. Um, and I know my Liberal Democrat colleagues are really fond of job shares. Um, so I was wondering if, the, uh, if they'd be interested in, uh, in job sharing this role over the next 12 months. Um, we've heard them in previous meetings suggest such things and think it's a really good idea. So let's see if they're, uh, they're keen to follow through on this at all. I think, I think we've got time to try and is, are you proposing that it's a, a shared chairmanship? If that's allowed. Okay. If that's a proposal... Um, uh, Mark, can, can we just ask the Democratic Services Manager, who happens to be with us, is that actually allowed, or has it... Is that allowed, uh, Daniel, or has it been done before ever? So, um, there are other committees of the council where chairmanship is shared. Um, it's usually where we're doing something jointly with another local authority, and the chair rotates between the two different local authorities. It's not something that we've done before, uh, as far as I'm aware, um, either as North Yorkshire County Council or the new North Yorkshire Council. Um, but certainly I can't see any barrier to it if that is the will of the committee. I mean, clearly it does present some um, technical issues about managing the transfer of, uh, or managing the, the, the meeting between two different chairs, but I would presume that the proposal is they alternate based on dates. So the first chair does the meeting at day one, as it were, or meeting one, then it goes to the chair for the second, the other chair for the second meeting and vice versa. If that is the base on which the proposal is put forward, is that my understanding that that's the proposal that you're, you're putting forward? Yeah, I'm happy with that, thank you. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not allowed to propose anything or vote, but I am gonna propose a question. Does the, do the, the candidates both agree that they would do that? Can I ask Councillor Marsh? No, I'm, I'm not happy to, to share that, sorry. Okay, I think the best way to do then is if that's a proposal for a shared chairmanship, I think, and it's been seconded, I think if we vote on that motion, motion first, and then that sets the base of which to take the votes for the nominations then, okay? So could I have those for a shared chairmanship for this committee, please? That's five, four, against. Seven. Abstentions. No. That motion does not, therefore, carry. So, therefore, then, can we go for the vote for the chairmanship for the committee, please? As for uh, votes for Councillor Marsh. Against. 
abstentions. Okay. We have votes for Councillor Haslam. Against abstentions. And therefore, uh, say that uh, Councillor Marsh is a nominated chairman for the committee. Or would you like to take your seat, Councillor Marsh? Thank you very much for that. Um, and um, again, welcome to everybody to this meeting of the ACC. Um, can I welcome officers Mark and Charlie? Where well, Charlie's got himself? He's over there. <laughs> Thank you. And. Um, We've got presenting officers today, Richard Binks, Head of Major Projects and Infrastructure, and Daniel Harry, who is our Democratic Services and Scrutiny Manager. And then we'll go on to the minutes of the meeting. Um, can we decide whether the minutes of the meetings held on the 16th of March and the 5th of May are correct? Uh, <coughs> sorry, Chair. Just to say, the minutes of the 16th of March, uh, an incorrect uh, copy was put online. So with the amendments that Chris Aldred uh, has pointed out, you've been circulated with a copy of those minutes today with some amendments in. So they will be the copy of the minutes that you'll be voting on today. Is everybody clear on that? If that's the case, then can I ask um, that there is a proposer and seconder for those minutes, please? Yeah, I'm very happy to propose those minutes as, uh, cir as circulated today. And a seconder? I'll, I'll second that, Jim. Therefore, can we go to the vote, please, on the um, minutes? I think that's unanimous. Because Council Warner can can't vote, can he? Now we move on to election of vice chairman. Oh, sorry, we want to go. I thought we did that together. Yeah. Um, a special meeting held on the 5th of May. Um, you're going to explain. Um, we've had uh, some um, notification of amendment to the meeting on the 5th of May where uh, Councillor Carles was in attendance and also the, the, to, to put in the names of the three groups where the, the nominators also the the um, speakers for those groups were actually spoke at the meeting so with those additions that's the minutes on which you'll be voting for today is everybody clear on that well the, can i ask for a proposer and a seconder yeah i'm happy to Councilor propose Alder. i'm happy to propose those minutes as well thank you councillor alder second i'll have to second jim thanks councillor Borbank. <coughs> can i then ask members to vote on that um, all those in favour of those being correct minutes. I think that's unanimous. Thank you. Now we move on to election of vice chairman. Um, so could I have nominees, please? Propose Councillor Monica Slater, Jim. Happy to second Councillor Monica Slater. Okay, thank you. So we take a vote on that. So we propose Councillor Haslam first. So all those in favour of Councillor Haslam, please. Thank you. And those against? Including myself. Abstentions, please. Obviously. Now, all those in f favour of Monica. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. 
those against and abstentions. Thank you. It's Monica who's been selected. Thank you. Right, next we'll move to apologies for absence. Oh, sorry. Uh, when is it, can we ask, uh, is there anything about matters arising from the second set of minutes, or is that on the agenda? There's one item I'd like to just ask if there's been a follow-up on. There's no matters arising from the minutes, but under the work programme, if there's anything arising from work that you've done, you can actually bring it up under the work programme item, councillor, and we can follow it up from that point. I'll bring it up then. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apologies for absence. We've, we've only got one, haven't we, from Councillor Peter Lacey. Any declarations of interest, members? No declarations of interest. Then we move on to agenda item six, which is public questions. And we've received a, a number of questions and statements. Um, so do we move to the West of Harrogate infrastructure strategy? And who have we got? Oh. And any debates as well? Jabez, sorry. Jabez. Sorry, I do always forget <laughs> that. <laughs> You're, you're ahead of a long queue. <laughs> uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, good morning, councillors. Before I start my statement, uh, as the chair has said, I'm speaking on behalf of the Western Art Coordination Group, which consists of Panel and Burnbridge Parish Council, North Rigton Parish Council, Beckwithshaw Parish Council, Harlow and Panel Ash Residents Association, Duchy Residents Association, and Hampstead Action Group. So broadly, it covers organisations along the Western Arc of Harrogate, just to clarify that. So I'm not just speaking on behalf of the Residents Association that I represent. So this statement is made on behalf of the Western Arc Coordination Group, and its purpose is to register our complete dissatisfaction concerning the lack of progress with the production of West Harrogate infrastructure strategy and associated infrastructure delivery schedule. For many years now, we have expressed our concern that the equivalent of a small town, approximately 4,000 dwellings, is being proposed for the Western Arc of Harrogate without an improved infrastructure to be able to support such a massive development. By infrastructure, we are not just referring to roads, but to schools, medical facilities, buses, etc. It also needs to be noted that all of this tracks back to a local plan process that started more than a decade ago and in many respects is now out of date. The time allotted today is not sufficient to go over the background to the work, but nearly a year ago, Harrogate Borough Council and North Yorkshire County Council presented us with a draft mitigation summary pack, solely concentrating on highways. At the time, we expressed the view that much of this work came over as incoherent and lacking any real structure. But we were assured that a complete infrastructure strategy and associated delivery schedule would be made available in October of last year. Council representatives assured us that these documents would include clear objectives, clear deliverables, timings, supporting data, and financial costings. This was a council commitment not one invented by us as stakeholders. Yet here we are in mid-2023, and the latest position is that consultants are still looking at the viability of what previous consultants have proposed. So far, we have seen no hard detail whatsoever in relation to the infrastructure strategy and delivery schedule, and no offer of meaningful engagement with the community. Recent correspondence would seem to indicate further delays. Therefore, our overall concern is that this work, when it eventually emerges, will deliver an ineffective and inadequate package. As a group, 
we have always expressed our willingness to be involved in discussions relating to issues of concern to our community and to play a positive role. But the reality is that we are now some years on and we see nothing that convinces us that there is any sort of a plan in place that will help to mitigate strains on the infrastructure to the west of Harrogate. And before somebody raises the matter, the parameters plan as it stands will not achieve this. We therefore respectfully ask for meaningful consultations to take place with community representatives before the above key documents are finalized and that our concerns are made known to the executive committee. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. I'll ask Mark Codman to respond. Yeah, we, we have a written response. Um, so, the current adopted Harrogate District's local plan, adopted supplementary planning documents, and site specific documents such as the West Harrogate Parameters Plan create a clear framework to, to achieve a coordinated strategic development at West Harrogate. These have wide-ranging infrastructure delivery at their heart and strive to provide high-quality placemaking which supports sustainable growth. Planning applications for development in the West Harrogate area will be considered against this existing policy framework. Appropriate trigger mechanisms will be included in Section 106 agreements to ensure that infrastructure directly related to the developments is delivered in a timely way over the life of the development. Opportunity for input by the local community into policy documents has been carried out through statutory periods of consultation. Additional engagement and information updates for key stakeholders have been provided on a number of occasions over the last couple of years. The current infrastructure work being carried out by officers and appointed consult consultants will add detail to the important framework provided by the adopted Harrogate District Local Plan and West Harrogate Parameters Plan. The infrastructure delivery schedule is an appendix to the plan and will remain so with updates only where there were gaps in detail at the time of the uh, schedule sign-off in February 2022. The infrastructure document takes the details of the plan and the schedule uh, setting out the mechanism of how the infrastructure across a number of adjacent sites will be coordinated. The schedule is intended as a tool for the implementation of these schemes, not a policy document. To support the Highways Authority in assessing the transport mitigation strategy for West Harrogate, the previous Harrogate Borough Council and North Yorkshire County Council, now North Yorkshire Council, jointly commissioned consultants to carry out a buildability review and costings exercise. This will provide clarification and certainty for future application determinations, accompanying Section 106 agreement and assist delivery of the transport works. Whilst the majority of this commission was carried out in autumn 2022, the complex technical nature of the work means it is not yet complete. Officers are prioritising this work, however the nature of strategic projects does sometimes involve unforeseen delays. We anticipate being in a position to hold further stakeholder engagement sessions in the next couple of months prior to finalising documents. In addition, the current planning applications for West Harrogate remain live, and further reconsultation for consultees and the public will be carried out following any resubmission package from the applicants and prior to formal determination of the planning applications. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I've got Councillor Aldred wanting to make a comment. Is that? I think we can make a, a comment, Chair, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Aldred. Just, just for clarification, Mark, you. You read that out, but you didn't say who who was the author. It clearly wasn't you. So can you just tell us who that statement was from? That was on behalf of planning and uh, transport section. So it's, so it's an integrated response. So it's a joint, yeah, joint, joint statement from, from officers. And I mean, my comment would be, I'm completely in agreement with the residents. This has been dragging on. I remember our first meeting last year, we had a similar statement from you guys. Uh, it wasn't yourself, it was um, the parish council, I think, who, 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 sorry, who presented it. But here we are a year later and nothing's happened. And really, we do need to get our act together on these matters because we uh, just people are just living 
in a state of flux where, where, where nothing is happening, and it is not fair to the residents. And I strongly you know, want the executive to get on top of this. I know we've had the distraction of local government reorganization and uh, eight councils into one, but that has now been achieved, and we really need to move on with these matters. And I don't want to be sitting here in a year's time and having similar presentations from parish councils. Thank you. I'll take one more comment because this isn't an item for debate. So, councilman. Thank you, Chair, precisely. Mine was just a point of order. I was just wondering if we had the right under the constitution to enter a debate following a statement or a question from a member of the public. That, that was just my point, thank you. No, we're not, unfortunately. Um, can I thank you, the uh, member of the public, for the question? And um, we'll, I think we're all as interested as you are. Can I now invite uh, Alison Hayward to, make, to read her statement, please? Again, <laughs> Madam Chairman, councillors, council officials, good morning. My name is Alison Hayward and I live in the Knox area of Harrogate. I'm here today to speak about the process of the planning committee meeting on Wednesday 31st of May 2023. I'm grateful for the chance to speak to you in person. The only application on the agenda was the one to build 53 houses off Knox Lane. This statement is given on behalf of the residents in the Knox and Bilton communities who have already expressed their opposition to the proposed development in this application, and very many of whom are extremely disappointed and outraged at the process followed during the meeting mentioned. We believe that it was unconstitutional and contrary to the principles of fair representation of the community. Although we are disappointed in the result, this statement is relating to the process of the meeting rather than the result. We ask this constituency meeting to reflect on the failures in the conduct of the planning meeting and to consider how to correct the injustice to local community democracy. The major but not the exclusive considerations are as follows. Once again, for the second time, the meeting to discuss this application was held during the half-term holiday. There has been very strenuous case made and well-documented problems raised by local residents about the hazards associated with this development. Why was it scheduled again for a time when it is likely to be less convenient for local residents to attend? especially galling when there happened to be no live streaming, which is invaluable to people who can't attend in public, in person. The proceedings were not available for public viewing on live streaming due to unexplained technical issues. This is in contravention of good practice established by HBC and many other local authorities over the past several years. The effect is that there was no proper record of the meeting available to the public. This is contrary to the right of public scrutiny and record. From the evidence of the minutes published, it also led to an inability to write an adequate record of the discussion and the decisions taken. No warning was given of these difficulties before the meeting. And when the chair announced that there would be no live stream, 
they should have said at the same time that the attendees there would... That, that, sorry. They should have told the attendees that there would be no voice recording either, and they were at liberty to make their own notes and record the meeting themselves. This did not occur. And so the public was disadvantaged and open government principles were compromised. Is it really the case that a committee member must, on the spot and during a committee meeting and without reference to any independent expertise, provide the fully referenced technical details with complete explanations of the contraventions of planning law and the NYC rules to successfully counter any legal arguments which may be put forward if there were to be an appeal submitted by the applicant. Does not the committee provide the recommendation and the legal department provide the minutiae of the legal defence if an appeal is lodged? This highlighted that the elected representatives of the public interest had not received adequate training in the rules which have been changed since the HBC was subsumed within the North Yorkshire Council. This made it impossible for them to do their job and serve their community effectively. There is a case to answer that this has allowed a miscarriage of the intent of the committee and we respectfully ask for your consideration of these issues. Thank you for your attention and for your continued service to the community. Thank you. Can I now invite Adele Laurie, Laurie Wilson to read your statement and question? Thank you, Chair. Um, just an introduction, my name is Adele Laurie Wilson. I'm a resident of the, the Bilton and Knox community and I'm also talking on a similar topic to Alison. Thank you. So my statement and question is as follows. I wish to bring to the attention of the committee the, the failings that I perceive occurred at the Harrogate and Knaresborough area con constituency planning committee meeting on Wednesday the 31st of May 2023 at 2 p.m. and this again is in connection with the planning application for 53 domestic dwellings off Knox Lane, Harrogate. The background to this is the application is a, a long-running and contentious application. It's received many objections on the planning portal. The application has had many alterations and amendments and has been brought to the planning committee on three separate occasions. I've been to these planning meetings and I'm concerned with the processes that do not appear to have been followed by the, the, count, the council and in effect rendering the planning committee powerless. I'll raise a number of sub, uh, comments I want to make. So firstly, my point is the failure to comply with the reasons for deferral. On the 14th of February 2023, the noted planning application was deferred for two reasons. One, to undertake further sample testing on the old railway lines for possible contaminants. It was requested this testing strategy be agreed with the planning committee before it's undertaken and also to gain further information from Northern Power Grid, read the risks from the, the power cables. The application was brought back to the planning committee on the 31st of May, 2023, with neither of the two deferral points being completed. The planning officer put this application forward with the recommendation to approve in principle. Why, when the requested information by the committee remained unavailable? I also note the huge number of conditions that have been attached to the application. My second point is the, the live streaming and recording. Despite the agenda for the 31st of May 2023, noting that the meeting was being held in person, it has been broadcasted and recorded and will be available to view via the following link. It was announced at the start of the meeting that the live stream was not happening due to technical issues. But given the huge level of local opposition and interest, many interested parties plan to watch this or live or subsequent recordings to avoid taking time for, away from other commitments such as work. I would too would have anticipated that it would have been recorded and uploaded later as there are many ways of recording a meeting. 
it transpires that there was no recording that took place. My next point is that a motion was not allowed to be voted on in the stance that was given by the council employees. The planning application did not get any committee members seconding the published motion as the majority of the committee were clearly unhappy with the application. One member clearly listed six different reasons why he opposed the application and he proposed that the application be refused. This was seconded by a second committee member. I was appalled by the conduct of the council solicitor and two council planning officers to all intents and purposes made it quite clear that they did not want the committee to reject this application and cited the possible legal costs of an appeal for the developer. That motion was not allowed to be voted on. This surely is in contravention of the democratic process. The application was again deferred on the very same grounds it was deferred on at the meeting on the 14th of February 2023. My next point is the lack of ability to question speakers or correct factually incorrect statements. I'm concerned at the process whether by the committee can now not ask questions of the speakers. I was concerned that the speakers and objectors cannot note to the meeting where the replies that were given to them were factually incorrect. I raised an issue about the land being in a special landscape area. Fortunately, the planning officer incorrectly informed the committee that only part of this site is in the SLA and not the whole development site. This is incorrect. The whole site is in the SLA. The solicitor noted that the railway embankment would be removed off site for testing. The toxicology specialist speaker wished to note that the testing must be done on site. He was not allowed to make this point. My next point is the, the minutes omitting key parts of the, the meeting. The published draft minutes exclude large parts of the meeting, i.e. the contents of the speakers and the objectors delivery in the meeting, the details of the committee's debate, the frustration of the committee that they were not allowed to ask questions of the applicant's representatives or any of the speakers, the committee's members' desire to reject the application and the motion that was not allowed to be voted on. This is especially poor given the lack of any live uh, any recording or live streaming. To sum up, my question is, given the failing, the above failings I've noted, why was the application allowed to be put before the committee again? And why is the committee not allowed to ask any questions or vote on a motion that's been proposed and seconded? I would ask this committee to consider if the current planning committee is being given the powers to truly consider and question planning applications or are they redundant? Plan uh, and are planning applications now being decided by just the planning officers and the solicitors? Thank you very much for listening and your time. Much appreciated. Thank you. Can I now ask Mark Cognan to respond, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, this response is from both legal, planning and uh, democratic service in terms of the points that have been raised. So. The council does apologise for the lack of a live stream. The issue was only discovered on the morning of the meeting and it, and it couldn't be resolved. It has never been the practice at Harrogate to record meetings. Live streaming was introduced to enable the public to watch meetings safely during COVID and recordings were only ever incidental to this. As the audio visual, visual system was not working, it would not have been possible to record the meeting. There is no requirement under law for public meetings to be live streamed or recorded and there's no public right that recordings of meetings be available in addition to the minutes. It is not the council's practice that verbatim minutes be produced on planning committee meetings. The minutes accurate, accurately reflect the decision taken and reflect good practice. Speakers are entitled to address the committee under the council's public speaking at planning committee scheme, which has been agreed by councillors as part of the council's constitution, and this scheme does not permit questions to be asked of speakers. During the course of the debate, it became apparent that Councillor Allred and other members of the committee were minded to vote against the officer recommendation in the report to approve the application and grant planning permission. Indeed, Councillor Allred proposed an amendment to this effect. The council solicitor and the planning manager both made interventions to remind members of the need to identify clear material planning reasons for refusing the application. 
Such advice was consistent with the Local Government Association Probity and Planning Guides 2019, which provides, councillors should be prepared to explain in full their planning reasons for not agreeing with the officer's recommendation, which should be set in the context of the development plan or the NPPF. The officer should also be given an opportunity to explain the implications of the contrary decision, including an assessment of likely appeal outcome based on policies set out in the development plan and the NPPF, and chances of a successful award of costs against the local authority should one be made. Additionally, the Council's own constitution, specifically the Code of Practice for Councillors and Officers Dealing with Planning Matters, contains guidance on best practice in the event that members are minded to vote contrary to officer re recommendation. The advice offered to members by officers during the course of the meeting was consistent with the code. It was made clear to members of the committee that they were free to vote in whichever way they wanted, but were advised of the implications of their choosing to do so on the basis of inadequate material planning reasons. In the event, members did not vote in favour of the recommendation, but opted to defer the application on the basis that the applicant had failed to provide information relating to potential land contamination, which had previously been requested, notwithstanding the fact that officers had queried the necessity of obtaining that particular information in the light of responses from relevant consultees to, the, to this aspect of the development. All members of the newly established North Yorkshire Council have received training on the constitutional structure of the authority, and moreover, additional training relating to the planning role of the function. The completion of such training is a prerequisite to participation at planning committee. There's, the procedure adopted was consistent with the council's constitution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And can I thank both um, um, Alison Hayward and Adele Laurie Wilson for your questions. Thank you. Councillor Aldred. Thanks, Chair, uh, and thanks for the questions, and thank you for your response on behalf of the officers, Mark. I'm not going to talk about the, ac the actual mechanics of the meeting, because I, <laughs> I very much want to sit on the next planning committee when it takes place, and uh, I, don't, I don't want to uh, prejudice myself by giving an opinion either, either way. Uh, I, do, I do agree with the fundamental front of your argument. We need to have a look at the Constitution because I, I think you made the point the Harrogate Borough Council system worked a lot better for all concerned than the current arrangements and I think we do, do need to look at that. I, I would, however, defend the officers on the live streaming because I was actually here for an hour and a half, two hours before the meeting sitting in, in the chamber and I know there were extensive consultations with people in the EFA and various IT people, and they really tried their hardest to get that meeting on stream. Sometimes technology doesn't work. And I'm speaking as a person who sat in this very chamber and pro proposed live streaming. There'll be several of my colleagues here who remember that. I think we're very lucky in how we get that we have it. There's other areas of the <coughs> council provision don't have it. I don't think any of the other planning committees do live stream because the, the meetings they have are in venues which don't have the technology. But we do. It's obviously appreciated by the public, which is the reason I very, very strongly wanted it to happen about three years ago, before, before COVID, actually. It wasn't just brought up at COVID. It was very much pre-COVID, but COVID proved how useful it was. But I will defend the officers. They did try very, very hard to get that live streaming and it was just technically not possible and it will happen on, on occasions I'm, I'm afraid I would have thought there'd be more extensive minutes when that happened but there, there you go thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that chair as I was named actually Councillor Aldred thank you I've now got Councillor Mann thank you thank you Jack. it was just a point of order again making the same point I mean I appreciate what Chris has just said, I, I, uh, I, I understand the comments he's made, but I don't think we should be entering into a debate after the public questions or public statements. That, that, that's my point, thank you. Um, I, I agree, not debate, but if somebody needs to make a point of clarification, I'm quite happy for that to happen. 
Okay, now we'll move on um, to a statement on the maximum speed of 20 miles per hour. Can I invite uh, Jenny Marks to read out that statement on behalf of Stephanie Talbot? Yeah, thank you and good morning. I'm reading the statement on behalf of Stephanie Talbot, who is the mother of one of the children seriously injured on the pavement whilst walking to school outside Asheville in February. This statement is relevant to agenda item seven. So this is her statement. My world was turned upside down on Thursday the 2nd of February. My eldest son Reuben and his friends were hit by a truck whilst walking to school. They were on the pavement. My daughter was also involved in the collision as her car was hit by the same truck. My youngest son was right behind his brother on the pavement and so witnessed the whole incident. My husband and I were there within a few minutes of the accident happening. Reuben's body had landed in positions it should never be in. Pieces of wall had to be removed from his body and he had eight broken bones, arms, leg and back. Fluid on his lungs, a degloved foot, not all the injuries. I was later told that when the paramedics arrived, his stats showed that he could easily have died whilst on the ground there. I will never get over what I saw and heard that day. I'm crying whilst I write this. Something like this should not happen to any child whilst walking to school. My children, in particular my eldest daughter, has never felt safe walking to school because of inconsiderate drivers and speeding motorists around Asheville College and Rosset High. She had said to me many times, it's not if it happens, Mum, it's when. She and a friend had been hit by a vehicle leaving the sports centre in September 2022 whilst walking on the path, which I reported to the police. I want children to feel safe walking to school and feel that having a 20 mile an hour network around schools in Harrogate will encourage more walking, cycling, and generally make children and their parents safer whilst traveling to school. Putting action in place should not be done as a consequence to a child's injury or even death. But this accident should be a wake up call to all parents, grandparents and the community to know that we need to make a change in our beautiful but busy town to enable our children to feel safe. 17 weeks on and many aspects of our lives are still on hold because of these injuries. I cannot even explain the pain and trauma that we have all gone through and will live with for the rest of our lives. Please be the people that make a difference. Thank you for listening. Um, can I thank you um, for, the, for that statement read on behalf of, very emotional I have to say, uh, being a, a grandparent um, and so I totally, totally understand. Um, can I now move on to, which is in connection with this, agenda item seven, which is a petition which is going to be given to the committee. Yes, yes, please. Uh, so, yeah, it's a petition that's been uh, been re received by the uh, the committee. It's for uh, the, res the title of the petition is for a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour on roads in South and West Harrogate to improve road safety. Um, the um, proposal of, of the petition will be Hazel Peacock will be advised to speak, asked to speak in a few minutes. Uh, just to say that it's a petition containing more than 500 signatures, so it is uh, required to be considered by the committee. 
Um, there are a number of courses of action which the committee can do. It can take the, the action required by the petition, not to take the action required, commission further investigation, or where it's one was a uh, council decision by the executive, add information which might inform those recommendations to, at that point. So the point is that there's a petition to be presented. The committee will enable to debate that, that commission for up to 15 minutes, and that will take place after um, uh, um, the presentation by, by the petition presenter. So I've put together the, go the, the governance side of that. There's some highways and transportation um, information to enable an informed debate as part of that petition, which informs part of the report. And I just thought I'd, I'd ask uh, Alan Matt, the head of the networks, if there's, if there's anything else that um, strategy network, if we need to add in and up to inform any particular updates for that uh, technical information, Alan. Okay, thank you. Um, just one. Um, the outputs from the 20 mile an hour review referred to in the report that, that you've seen are due to be reported back to executive in July, not June, as per the report. Can I now invite um, um, the petition um, who's presenting the position? Hazel. It's Hazel, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> I should know. <laughs> Can I invite Hazel uh, to pretend, present the petition? Can I just test that? It's not echoing. Okay. Um, Thank you, Chair and the committee. I'm Hazel Peacock, and this is Dr. Vicky Evans to my left. Um, we are both the petitioners, um, which you have referred to and is on the agenda. We are from the Oakland Road Safety and Active Travel Campaign and are present today to hear the dis discussion you will have on our petition, which was signed by 924 people. Our proposal calls for a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour in roads in South and West Harrogate across Oatlands, parts of Panel, Lestray, Hookstone and St George's. This is urgently needed for the safety, health and well-being of children and the wider community. Over 4,000 children walk, cycle, travel by car and bus to schools in the area and a further 5,000 attend the schools in the Panelash area. Our proposal complements and is dovetailed with the initiative by Panelash Safe Streets, who are here today, with the aim to deliver better road safety and facilitate active travel for a total of 9,000 children and the community. You have just heard of the devastating effects of the collision on the pavement on Yew Tree Lane in February, and you're also aware of the collision outside Oakland Junior School, also on the pavement in January. These awful events, coupled with overwhelming evidence of the benefits of 20 miles an hour limits, demonstrate why change is urgently needed. To reference a few, the road safety charity break website states that the higher the speed a vehicle travels, the greater likelihood of a serious injury or death if there is a crash. And a crash at 30 mile an hour miles per hour involves a lot more energy and destructive potential than a crash at 20 miles an hour. This is further evidenced by Transport for London data released in February showing that people hit by a vehicle at 20 miles an hour are around five times less likely to be killed than at 30 miles an hour. The changes to maximum speed limits of 20 miles an hour in other rural and urban areas of Yorkshire and the UK show positive effects. For example, in Edinburgh, road traffic casualties were reduced by 40%. percent i would also like to add that the Royal College of Pediatricians policy of 2020 advocates local authorities should commit to expansion of 20 mile an hour zones within built up and urban areas. And more recently, the Parliamentary Advisory Council for Transport Safety stated in May that 20 miles an hour is now generally accepted as the safe speed for streets used by people walking, cycling or wheeling. In October last year, this committee resolved for the executive at North Yorkshire to be, be advised of a wish for a 20 mile an hour speed limit to be piloted throughout towns and villages in the constituency area where a need has been identified. We believe, coupled together, all the evidence, recent collisions, and the support for our petition, that of Panelastray Streets, 
and the support locally of the road, from the road um, safety school group which we established shows a need for this to be implemented with urgent effect. We appreciate all the, the, the support we have from stakeholders, including Councillors Marsh, Councillors Mann, Schof and Schofield, and the continued engagement with the officers, two of which are here today, um, Melissa Burnham and, and Alan McVeigh. We urge you to make a positive recommendation to the executive so they may make a favorable decision at their meeting on the 20th of June, which I understood, um, when Councillor Mann, Keen, sorry, not Councillor Mann, beg your pardon, <laughs> when Councillor Keen Duncan will report on the review of 20 miles an hour. This will help save lives, reduce collisions, and bring about lasting improvements to road safety, the environment, active travel, and public health for our communities. Thank you. like to make a debating contribution if I may are we, okay, are we okay to enter debate yeah no oh. just wanting points of clarification first before we go into the yeah no, no point of clarification from me thanks okay then I invite Alan McVeigh can I, can I just quickly ask because I didn't quite ga um, catch when the actual next meeting is because you said it wasn't the June so what date was it in July I didn't hear you sorry the 4th of July. 4th of July. Thank you. And can I invite Mr McVeigh whether you've got any clarification or technical updates you want? There's nothing, nothing else to add. Then we, then we can go into debate. Um, if members would like to debate, Council Mann. Chair, you're very kind, thank you. Um, as the petitioner has stated, it is very important that we reduce collisions, improve safety and reduce air pollution in South and West Harrogate, including the Oatlands neighbourhoods. In the Oatlands neighbourhoods of my electoral division, there are three schools, Oatlands Infants, Oatlands Junior and Asheville College. And it's vital that we protect children and young people as they travel each day to and from these schools. That is why earlier this year, I asked the, the highways team and the executive member for highways to use, to use the council's existing 20 mile an hour policy and existing funds to bring in 20 mile an hour limits on Hoxton Road, Green Lane, Utree Lane and Beechwood Grove, all of which have schools located on them. As we know from previous discussions of this committee, the executive member and the highways team have over the last few months been reviewing the existing 20 mile an hour policy and considering what, if any, improvements should be made. This review is ongoing and I understand it now includes the matters and issues raised by this petition. We now await Councillor Duncan's report, and I understand it will go to the executive, as we have heard, in the next few weeks. Given this committee, under our constitution, only has a limited time to discuss this important uh, matter and petition, I would like, if I may, Chairman, to propose a motion either now or later by way of a response from this committee to the petitioner. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Have we got any more comments from members? Councillor Haslam. I've been campaigning for uh, better and more active travel to schools since 2019 and I very much support the need for safety around schools. Uh, and some of the, the key barrier that I found when I started to do all this work was actually the speed of the traffic. The fact is that parents don't, uh, who, are, who effectively make the decisions for the child feel the child isn't, isn't safe. On average, 50% of all school children would like to cycle to school. In reality, only 4% actually cycle to school because the important people in their life, their carers, their parents, are dead against it. So 
I, I, I welcome this, and I'm sorry it's taken us so long to get to this stage in terms of our safety around our schools, not only in terms of potential, uh, potential accidents, but also we have some serious stats in this country. So about 1,800 people die on our roads as, uh, as a result of an accident, but 40,000 people a year die of uh, air quality problems, of which 10,000 of those are attributed to uh, exhaust from vehicles. So I do think this is a very serious point, and I do think it needs to be carefully considered as to how, it, how it's done. My final point really is we can put in a 20 mile an hour speed limit, but at the end of the day, it's all about behavioral and attitude changes to this. Uh, when we did the stats on Harrogate in 2018, I think six, more than 60% of the journeys in this town are less than 1.8 kilometers, not even miles, 1.8 kilometers. Surely we should be able to walk those distances, and a lot of that is to do with school commuting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Have we got any more comments? Councillor Scofield. So, so I, I um, welcome Councillor Haslam and Cou Councillor Mann's comments. My, my feelings on this are well documented, um, and I feel, and I completely agree with Councillor Haslam that it has been going on far too long. It is about time now that, a bit like the previous conversation, we don't keep going down this road and having this conversation. We need to be acting on this now, and we need to be ensuring that Councillor Duncan and his highway team, who are looking into this very in depth, I've been to quite a few meetings, that we support them on it and we help them uh, push on with this. Thank you. Councillor Gibbs. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I don't really disagree with anything that's been said so far. Um, I do have one very slight reservation, and, and it's uh, apologies if I've misinterpreted this slightly. 99% um, of the roads that I think are in this scheme I have absolutely no issue with. However, the, the main roads of Leeds Road and Otley Road would be a slight concern to me if they were brought in um, at 20 miles an hour. I mean, being perfectly honest, at certain times of the day, you can't get to 20 miles an hour on those roads. Um, but at quiet times of the day, i.e. when there's no school children around and schools are closed, um, I think a 20 mile an hour limit on those roads would not be a good idea. Um, and just in terms of you know funding for this, I'm aware that um, when the council made the brave and, in my opinion, correct decision not to uh, proceed with the disaster that was the Otley Road cycleway, um, there was a lot of money set aside that was for that. And my understanding, and Mike, you might know more about this than me, um, that money has to be spent effectively on active travel, for want of a better phrase, schemes in that part of town. And to me, I would like to ensure that if, when we bring this forward, assuming we bring this forward, when we bring this forward, that money could perhaps be used to help implement some of these things, um, because the money is there. Um, I can't remember, forgive me, what the, what the total is. Um, but to me, that seems a good use of that money that was originally earmarked for further stages of Otley Road, the Otley Road cycleway, um, and I'd be keen to put that money to good use. So I don't know if we can, as a committee, can suggest that that money goes towards that. Thank you. Councillor Schofield. So I'm sure Melissa will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's £560,000 um, still to be allocated, but that is actually going to be used just on the Otley Road corridor not the rest of this plan, isn't it? It's two completely separate issues, and that money will not be used for this plan, but the Otley Road corridor that we're looking at as we had the meeting the other day. Thank you. Council Warnocken. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think this committee has already emphasised its commitment to protecting pedestrians and cyclists and... Um, improving air quality by asking for its pilot scheme for uh, 20 miles per hour. That pilot scheme this committee supported and it, then uh, Selby and Ainsty uh, constituency committee supported that scheme. It went to scrutiny and scrutiny supported a pilot a request for a pilot scheme. There's clearly a strong feeling towards d taking action. Within that uh, draft, I mean, I drafted that. Within that draft, the word need was emphasised. The question was, was that the, was that the right word? But, that, you know, we have that word going through the, the documents now. And I clearly think, given the statements that was, the questions that were gi 
given to us earlier about the tragic situation that happened outside Asheville, there's no question about need. Need is there. And you know, do we have to wait for something similar to, to happen elsewhere to establish need? The need is there, so let's get on with it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor has question. Just to add to that, you, you said, Arnold, uh, let's get on with it. If it is a pilot, then that needs to be scoped out, drawn up, so that we know exactly what it is, because... You, you, what clarification? No, 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 I'm not it saying... Is, it is what they're asking not, for. Well, well then, <laughs> but, but that is not what this committee has committed to. Councillor Gibbs has already in this meeting just said that there are elements of that that, that wouldn't be supported. So I think this is, this is the whole point about this. These things are difficult to deliver on the ground, so we have, a, we have to proceed with a, a policy to determine what it looks like. And so I'm quite happy to wait for the, the report to the executive, which would be used to form a pilot if, if that was what was gonna happen. But that, what that pilot actually looks like, line by line, street by street, sign by sign, is what's needed for something like this. And that's, that's just a fact of life, whether we like it or not. Thank you. I'm afraid I can't take anything from members of the public. Um, Councillor Mann. If, if there's no further debate, I've got a draft motion, I, which might I have might got help. something to add to the debate okay. myself. I've got Hannah. Right, thank you, Chair. I've got Hannah. Councillor Gosler. Um, I just wanted to say that I would be happier to propose that we take the action requested by the petition as was the possible responses thank you and i presume was that your hand up council Aldrin? no i was just no. instructing council goslow to get near to a microphone so we do you want to repeat that because we yeah, could we could only just hear um, I simply wanted to propose that we take the action requested by the petition as is our possible responses. I understand that obviously the executive are looking into this, but to give our support as follows our values on this, I think we should um, follow that response. Okay. Councillor Windus. Can I just make a comment? Um, I, I was hoping that this um, ACC would make some recommendation to them so that at least they can hear from the people that have been speaking here today. And can I also uh, just say to Councillor Haslam, this was started by my late husband and I nearly 20 years ago, and we were successful then in getting it outside Hookston Chase School, but then it all ended. Um, so which is a great shame. And therefore, I think it's for us as a, an ACC to put a recommendation towards the executive so they n understand that what our local people are saying to us. And uh, I would hope some did make a recommendation that we move forward on that one. Councillor Walker. Thank you. I think Councillor Mann was was first, so I'm quite happy to, to defer to Councillor Mann and then come okay. in. Okay, Councillor Mann. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Walker. Um, I would like to propose the following um, motion, if I may. Um, this committee thanks the petitioner for presenting these important issues to this meeting. The committee notes the petition and recognises that the requested actions from the petition are currently being considered as part of the ongoing review by the Council 
of its current 20 mile per hour speed limit and zone policy. Full stop, one more sentence if I may. Uh, the committee now awaits the publication of Councillor Duncan's report on the review. And, and that was it, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Walker. So, um, th thank you for that um, motion, uh, Councillor Mann. I personally think um, it's not strong enough. This is an opportunity that we should not miss, and we need to show the executive um, our views on this. This tragedy should not have happened, and it's within our gift to send that message on our views to the executive so that this does not happen to anybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is that a, a, a recommendation that you want to put forward? I think Councillor uh, Goslow has already put that, and, and I yeah. suppose it was so just to reinforce that, you, and I'm, and I'm happy to second that, yes. Thank you. Just to be clear, Chair, is, is, are we seconding Councillor Goslow's proposal that, uh, that moving the uh, aim of the petition in terms of what it wants to achieve? Yeah. Okay, and we, so if we propose and a seconder for the, uh, um, the request in the petition. Yes, well, Councillor Goslow has proposed and Councillor Walker's seconded. Okay. Are members clear on, on what's been proposed and seconded? No, no Chair. Would you like to write that mark? Well, Councillor Goslow moved the request from the petition in terms of what it was asking for, and it's been seconded as well. So, so can, I, can, I clarif can I clarify, Chair? So we're being asked to support, if I go to the u.38degrees.org.uk, and that petition, you're asking me to support word for word what's in that petition. Is that, is that, I mean, for the purpose of the minutes, uh, Mark, you, uh, you know, we need to be uh, clear absolutely. that that's exactly what we're being yeah. asked to the, support. The petition, as it's stated, is, is the, the, the aims of the petition has been moved in terms of what it's asking for. If there's any change to that or anything else, that's another amendment to the uh, proposal that's been put forward and seconded. Would you like to speak, Monica? Can I propose that the the motion uh, or the response um, focuses on 2.4 of the petition, where it says the petition calls for North Yorkshire Council to deliver a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour across South and West Harrogate, covering Oatlands and parts of Panel, Stray, Hookstone, and St George's areas in Harrogate. Councillor Gibbs. So, again, just a point of clarification. That the 2.4 that's just been read says, unless I'm missing this or I, I can't click the right button, um, says mentions the rest of the outline in red on the petition. On the petition, I can't actually find a map. Um, and I, just to re uh, my earlier point, 99% of this, the streets in South and West Harrogate, I have no issue with, but I don't think I can vote for putting a 20 mile an hour speed limit on Leeds Road or Otley Road. And if that isn't in red, which I think it is, but I don't know because I can't find the map, um, then I'm fine with it. But if it is in red, um, then I have a slight issue with it. Councillor Mann. I'm probably being a bit thick, but um, I, I proposed a motion uh, a minute or two ago. Don't, um, shouldn't we be asking for a seconder for, for that motion? Or have we moved on? Or have I missed something? I don't know. Uh, just grateful for some, some advice, please. Just clarity. Councillor Goslow uh, proposed uh, the, the, the petition earlier on in the debate. Thank you very much. Okay, is, is everyone clear now? Councillor Goslow. Um, I'm willing to take the amendment suggested by Councillor Monica Slater. Thank you, is the seconder? Happy and, to. and I'm happy to second that amendment. Can you just clarify then what we'll be voting on, please? Would you like to read that amendment out again, Councillor Monkersley? Yeah, so it would be the petition calls, um, or the 
So the um, Eric Constituency Committee supports the petition's call for North Yorkshire Council to deliver a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour across South and West Harrogate, covering Oatlands and parts of Panel, Stray, Hookstone and St George's areas in Harrogate. So it's not, so un unlike the petition, it's not specifying exactly. I mean, I think, I'm not trying to be pedantic here, but for the committee to have any credibility, we need to be clear what we're asking people to do. So, so there isn't a scheme that we're being asked to support. We're at being asked to support a general principle in that general area. At the end of the day, the, the council in, and C Councillor Duncan's report is surely going to look at, or my understanding is that it's looking at the current um, 20 mile per hour zone policy and whether that can be extended whatever policy he has is going to then would be then used when looking at this area of Harrogate that's my understanding of how it would work so what we what I'm suggesting is that we ask for the for the area to be considered but obviously in that consideration they are going to apply whatever their policy rules are so there will be some roads I imagine that will be excluded but that would be down to to the council's policy. And, and, and that's fine, so, so I understand that, because there's a, there's a clear difference between a direct petition request to do something and what you've described, which is to, to wait for the policy to be clarified, amended, whatever the, you know, the council's policy on introducing 20 mile an hour zones or limits is, and then effectively to ask for this petition request to be laid over that policy and see where we get. Because that's really what you just said. Uh, well, what I'm saying is we're, as we're asking for a 20 mile per hour zone, but in reality, we know that that's always going to fall within whatever the policy is. They're not going to make an exception just for one area. If they're reviewing the whole policy, then what we're saying is, as a matter of urgency, can this area be considered for 20 miles per hour? Yeah, but they're he, always going to apply what the policy... That, that's fine. If, if it's applying a policy to an area, because even just in what you just said there, a 20-mile-hour zone and 20-mile-an-hour zone is speed humps. I'm not voting for speed humps on Otley Road. That's what it... Well, if you, if you read the policy, right, there's a difference between a 20-mile-an-hour limit and a 20-mile-an-hour uh, zone. Zones are speed humps. You can't get away from it. But anyway, I think I think we're clear now. We're asking for this policy, sorry, for this petition to be to be considered against the new policy when the executive endorses it. I don't think that's controversial at all. We don't have speed humps on Hoogston Chase. Council Hassan. So I'm a little confused. Uh, the petition calls for North Yorkshire Council to deliver or to consider. What, what is the phrase? Uh, because to deliver is different to consider. Uh, and so I think we need to be absolutely right. And if, we, if, for example, we put the word urgently consider, then, but deliver actually commits, seems, seems to me it's committing to, uh, committing to that. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm not sure that we can commit to that. So I'd like to just understand what words we're using here? Well, that's that's for us to vote on, isn't it? So my my position is that I would urge them to deliver twenty mile per hour speed limits. Whether they do or not is is you know out of my hands. Right, I'm going to have to move on, but I'll take two more speakers. That's Councillor Warnock and, and then Councillor Aldred, and then we, we go to the vote. Thank you. Um, I, I'm glad I don't have a vote because it's really confusing. Um, I, but I will say, and, I, and you know, sometimes confusion is because people, are, I think, it's, an, it's a really important issue and they want to get it right. And I take Councillor Harrison's point about the it. Um, I think, you Chair, you said we you feel this committee should send a strong message to the executive. I think members of the public need to know that we actually can't make decisions. So we are sending messages to the, the executive. On this topic, we can't. So I think we should send our strong message, or this committee should send it its strong message, because I'm not a voter. Um, and I think clearly the, the, the need and the passion 
that's been delivered to us today by members of the public cannot be ignored. It would be remiss of our role as their representatives to ignore it. So I'm, I'm not proposing, because I'm not allowed, but I am suggesting that we send the strongest message possible that comes from the majority of this committee. I'd like us to, you know, cross party support on this. So let's decide what that message is as strong as we can and make it very, very clear how we feel about what's being presented to us today. Thank you. Councillor Aldred, the final speaker on this. Uh, I'm just seeking a way of getting that cross party because I think it's really important, as Arnold says. Um, I, can, John, can you just repeat, and you don't have to do it slowly this time, the, your proposal? Okay. Um, this committee thanks the petitioner for uh, presenting these important issues to this meeting. Uh, the committee notes the petition and recognises that the requested actions from the petition are currently being considered as part of the ongoing review by the Council of its current 20 mile per hour speed limit and zone policy. The committee, the committee now awaits the publication of Councillor Duncan's report on the review. Right, so I'd like to propose we, we do that, but we add a final sentence, say, the area... Councillor Alder, can I just say, that's not what's on the table at the moment. Right, okay. So we need to make sure that we're discussing what's on the table at the moment. And uh, I think we've had enough of a debate on it, and I think, I don't know whether, Mark, you want to read out what the proposal is, and then we can go to the vote on it. Well, the proposal is as it was at 2.4 in the report, which was the petition calls for North Yorkshire Council to deliver a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour across South and West Harrogate, covering Oatlands and parts of Panel, Stray, Huxton, St George's areas and Harrogate. And it's got as outlined in red in the petition, but again, that's not clear, but that's the wording that you've uh, agreed to an amendment to the original proposal, and that's the wording that you've, that's been proposed and seconded as at the moment. Okay, I think we've debated this enough, so... All those in favour of the motion on the table, please show. Those against? Abstentions. Thank you. And the result is, Mark? That has been carried. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you for bringing... Right, we come now to agenda item eight, which is the petition referred to the committee for consideration on Harrogate Station Gateway opposition. Thank you, Chair. This is um, another petition received, which has uh, received uh, more than 500 signatures and therefore requires consideration by, by the committee. Sorry, I'm just getting some feedback. Um, so again, the options for yourselves are, we'll introduce the uh, petition sponsor to introduce the report. Uh, again, the options are to take the action, not to take the action requested, commission further investigation, or when it's a matter where the executive is required to make the final decision, make recommendations which will inform that decision. Uh, again, there is the, the procedural part of the report, and then there's the officer side of the report, which provides the highways and transportation comments regarding to the petition. Mm -hmm. And again, I will ask um, Richard Binks if there's anything to add from a, an update or, or otherwise in terms of anything to add to the report as it stands. So, yes, thank you, Chair. I'm aware of a petition that's come in. Um, fully accept the, the, you know, the stance made within the petition. I think we are at a, a juncture where, you know, I must apologise on behalf of the team if, you, if, if there's a feeling that uh, residents, etc., have not been uh, had the grace of a one-to-one -one communication. Um, to that effect, I'd like to extend an olive branch personally. Uh, Rachel, if you're free for a coffee after this, I'd be more than happy to sit down and let's go and have a one-to-one -one, uh, and discuss, you know, our respective positions here. And I really do want to work together on a successful deliverable scheme. Um, I would, I would 
you know, in terms of an update, we yesterday hosted a contingent from the Department for the Transport uh, in, in town. Uh, they came up from London, uh, and indeed the West Yorkshire Combined Authority was a party of 10 people walking around town, uh, doing a real deep dive on the project. Uh, it was a very fruitful day. Uh, they, it was the first time they'd actually visited the site in person. You can imagine the DFT, uh, very busy people. Uh, they were really taken with what they saw. They really think the scheme's fantastic and they're showing a huge amount of support for the project. Um, there were discussions uh, in, that, in that forum in terms of um, the, the Ford programme, uh, the construction phasing, the financial position, the risk position. Um, again, uh, you know, the liaison went, went very well. We're awaiting feedback in terms of uh, that funding profile position, uh, but it's certainly going in a positive direction. So I think all the aspects of the scheme are lining up t to deliver this, you know, this wonderful project, and I, I do 100% appreciate that the huge amount of passion in the community, you know, either, either positive or negative, uh, and we share that passion as a delivery team, we really do. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of love for Harrogate. Uh, I, I adore Harrogate. You know, it's a fantastic place to be. We really do want to make it better. Um, and I think, you know, I want to build a stronger relationship uh, with the community in that respect. And as I say, more than happy personally to sit down. I, I've only been with the council uh, 15 months now, so I think this scheme was started off by a predecessor, so I wasn't a party to some of the original uh, you know, inception uh, entry point to the project, uh, certainly stakeholder perspective. Uh, and obviously it was, it was commenced in the pandemic as well. So I think at that point it wasn't possible to, to do in-person meetings, for instance. And I think, you know, taking a sort of a long view of the project, um, there has been three rounds of communication, four rounds if you, can, if you include the 2019 congestion study, five rounds if you include the traffic regulation order. I think, you know, in context as well, there are 35 schemes, TCF schemes being delivered throughout the West Yorkshire Combined Authority area, of which uh, North Yorkshire are a part of. Of those 35 schemes, this is the only one that's had three rounds of comms. The other have only had two. We have gone the extra mile. We have listened. I think, unfortunately, if, if you don't like the, the answer that we've listened, but we've not responded to the you know, letter of what the objection is, then I, again, offer my apologies for that. But as I say, we are where we are. Uh, we're heading in a trajectory of delivery. We got full unanimous support at Executive only a couple of weeks ago, so we've got that green light to progress forward now. Personally, I'd like to focus on that delivery aspect of it. I want to give a positive face to the outside world, to the grant funding bodies that were united in delivering a successful scheme say to make Harrogate a more stunning place than it really is. I do personally think we're in the, you know, that, that attuned eye that when you walk the streets, it's looking a bit tired, to be honest, it really is. You know, you have concrete paving in Station Square. James Street's all concrete, it's not attractive. Can, can I ask you please to sum up? This is about the petition. Indeed it is. As I say, in summary, we defend the project, uh, we'd, work, we'd like to work together, and as I say, the offer is having a one-to-one -one afterwards, so thank you. Thank you. Now can I ask the um, uh, Rachel Inchbrook to present yeah. the petition, please? Oh, well, um, good morning, councillors. Um, can I just say it's not a one-to-one -one with me, it's a one-to-one -one with several groups, by the way. So. It's not just a one-to-one -one with me. But besides that, I'm here today um, as a member of Granville Road Area Residence Group to present and speak about a petition set up against the Gateway Project, which is on behalf of several groups and several hundred people. And it has now been signed by over 2,000 people. Um, so the petition was set up to oppose the gateway scheme and as a town centre resident and we feel we've been totally ignored with regards to our concerns about the negative impacts from the proposed Harrogate gate gateway scheme 
I've just heard councillors talk about air pollution and how important it is. We've never had any, any support on that around our area. Um, so, the town centre residents, we feel we've had lack of any in-person consultation for residents and is of, it is of a key significance. We've been offered a quick Zoom session online at short notice to tick boxes and residents feel this was a complete insult. We feel mass there's been massaging and presentation of data at the last meeting has caused considerable outrage and anger. More specifically, I was shocked at, a com at the complete disgraceful behavior towards the petition at the executive meeting on the 30th of May. It was laughed at and dismissed, which surely contravenes any democratic process. We were refused to debate despite having over 2,000 signatures, which is well over the 500 required for a debate. I've emailed a formal complaint specifically about this to the Highways Executive Keen Duncan, and I am still waiting for a, a reply. To recap, the council officer who mocked this petition announced that he had rigorously checked the petition and that it proved absolutely nothing which is a complete insult to a lot of people who have signed it. And more people signed this petition than took part with, on, um, with the online surveys with North Yorkshire County Council. I believe there still are many, many people and many, many businesses that are unaware of the Gateway Scheme, hence the relatively low response to all of our petitions and online surveys. At the last public meeting in Harrogate on the 5th of May, there was very confusing information regarding the plans. Have the original plans been changed? If so, why hasn't there been a public consultation on these plans, as they are not the same plans that were passed? We still we have still not had a meeting between the residents and the council in person even though we've been promised, which is totally unacceptable in a democratic system. Together with this petition and the signatures and all the groups involved, which are Harrogate Residents Association, Granville Road Area Residents Group, the BID, the Chamber of Commerce, the Stray Defence Group and Harrogate Independence, we have no confidence in the Highways Executive of North Yorkshire County Council and their officers who are leading this project. Thank you. Um, now it's an opportunity for members to debate the petition. Councillor Aldred. Just so we're clear, <laughs> I do have a proposal uh, and I've given it to Mr. Codman and uh, Mr. Casey prior to the meeting. Uh, I would like to propose this at some stage. I don't want to stifle debate, but I, I, I would like to see members to see what the proposal is at this stage, and we can come back to, to vote on it. Because uh, I do believe this proposal would address some of the... Um, issues that Rachel has just made there. I'm glad you brew that up, Charlie, because I couldn't read <laughs> So this is a proposal that ACC members wish to take the op opportunity presented by this petition, for which many thanks, Rachel, to express grave disappointment that, to date, there has been no engagement with individuals and groups who express concerns regarding the proposed gateway scheme at the meeting on the 5th of May. This is despite the Area Constituency Committee passing a motion at the meeting asking for this to happen and receiving reassurances from the Executive Member for Highways and Transportation that it would happen. This committee therefore requests 
that a full schedule of engagement meetings is circulated to members no later than Friday the 30th of June, and that members of this committee are also invited to these meetings. In addition, the ACC further requests that within the same timescale, officers set up a politically proportionate ACC working group of five members, which will be charged with working with officers and the executive member for highways and transportation to produce a report to be considered by the committee and it, at its meeting on the 14th of September, which addresses the concern raised by residents and organisations, as well as detailing the rigorous monitoring schemes referred to in the motion proposed on 5th of May, and the, the bracket is what, what was in the motion. I, I, I do think that addresses the concerns of the, the petition, and what we need now is that series of discussions with all the groups that um, Rachel listed there, but also other groups which want to be involved, such as um, the Civic Society. There was a headline in the in the advertiser last week, wasn't there, that the Civic Society wants to be re-engaged, and people like um, Harrogate Carbon Neutral and the Harrogate Cycling Forum and, and as well. I am... <laughs> You know, we did ask to be involved. We did ask to be kept on board here. That was the basis of the, of the, the, the majority decision on the 5th of May. And yet, I don't think we have been between uh, the 5th of May and the 30th of May when the decision was taken in, in North Allerton. I've got a few quotes from the minutes we approved earlier uh, in the meeting from Councillor Duncan saying that we would be involved as ACC members and uh, we, we just haven't been. So this is why I feel we've got to strongly set this process in motion. We have to take the lead here, because I don't think the executive is. And I must admit, Richard, I am disappointed to hear that there was a meeting yesterday and councillors here did not know anything about it when we passed that resolution on the 5th of May saying that uh, we, we want to be involved in it. I, I would have thought the very least would be an email saying that uh, that meeting was taking place. So that is what I'm going to propose, but I'd, I would have thought other members want to come in with debate, so I'll leave that on the table. I'm, I hope I've got a seconder somewhere for that as well. I was just about to say, is there a seconder for that? Yeah, I'll second that. That's been seconded. Right. Councillor Harris. I may as well get in first and then I'll shut up. <laughs> I won't be supporting it, uh, Chris. Um, the, there's a fundamental point here that this committee, I'm just reading from the minutes, passed a resolution that, um, uh, that we wanted a meaningful role in the implementation of the scheme. The chair is against the scheme. The chair wants to stop the scheme. The chair, despite what this committee said, went to the executive and implored them to stop the scheme. Yeah. The petition wants to stop the scheme. So the two things are at odds. We're talking about people who want to stop the scheme, not to, about people who want meaningful input in implementing the scheme. You can say, you know, what you like, but, but that's the fact of the matter. So, so I'm quite happy to work with people, you know, to have a meaningful role in implementing the scheme but but we're kidding ourselves if we think that this is what this is you know the the, the chair wants to stop the scheme the petition wants to stop the scheme <laughs> so what's the point Council councillor walker so i was against the scheme i'm happy to support the motion because it's not the right scheme that's what we were promised in the meeting that we would be engaged and like Councillor Audred, I knew nothing about a meeting yesterday, which is disappointing. For me, um, I have a couple of main issues. It, it, it's about the whole active travel about for the whole of the district. So it's not just about this scheme. It's about redu reducing people out of their cars. We were lucky enough uh, last week uh, to have a, a Let's Talk data looking at Harrogate. One of the top issues in that was congestion. Um, so it's only a very small part if we're going to reduce the um, 
congestion in, in that corridor. But I've said this, and I've said this, and I'll say it again, uh, it's about a whole active transport scheme for the whole of the district, if not the whole of North Yorkshire, that connects those two corridors, and it actually links into the, some of the discussion earlier about how we get our children to school in a safe way. It is not safe for our children to use their bikes. I will not go on my bike in certain areas within the town, um, and I am a competent cyclist. Um, so we need to improve that, and for me, this is what this is all about. It's about improving the whole active transport scheme, um, and there needs to be equity across the whole of the system, including a park and ride. There is one in Weatherby and Scarborough. Our uh, penalties for parking enforcement subsidise that, uh, and we in Harrogate and Knaresborough, if that's what the residents want, that's what, as an area committee, we should be suggesting to the executive, and that needs to be included in that whole holistic approach. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Broadbank. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, <coughs> the, um, I've got the, the actual motion that we passed at the last meeting in front of me. You set out your vision, because you have to look to the future on all these things, not, not the past, you look to the future. What you, kind of Harrogate, town centre that you want, that was set out first few lines in the motion. Then you welcome the fact that there may be some money there, out there, to help us achieve the vision. That's there as well. Mention a gateway scheme in the, in the, four, in the third line. It doesn't necessarily say the scheme that we've got 100% now. It means that something in the town would be welcome, an a gateway scheme. It mentioned also that we look, do bring all the individuals and the residents groups and everybody else uh, in part of this consultation properly. They are consulted, they got round the table, basically getting round the table and just go through what it is we, we would like to see in Harrogate Town Centre to help the retail and everybody else cope with the changes in retail and so on that's happening now with internet shopping, shopping and all the rest, there's lots of challenges out there. We need to get everybody around to face up to that and how we can deal with it. And the area committee, we want to have a meaningful role. That was number two. And the monitoring systems, number three. The town centre is changing. It always has been changing. It doesn't stay, stand still and never has. And we need to have something and, and involve people in what the future holds for the town centre. That's why we need to get people around the table. That's why we need to look to the future. And that, to me, and that's what I voted for, was the purpose of the original motion in the first place. Councillor Haslam. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this particular issue has been de debated exhaustively. Uh, um, and we've actually sort of given our response and we've answered the actual thing that we want the gateway to go ahead. Or, in Philip's terms, a gateway to go ahead. And there may be some slight modification, I guess, as a result. Um, where this particular motion loses me, if there is evidence, and, uh, and I suspect there is, is it, it loses me once we go past are also invited to these meetings because I don't see the point of duplicating other people's work. This work has been done, it was done by HBC in the master plan back in 2015, 2016. A lot of this work has already been done. So I could, I could probably find support around, as long as there's evidence that none of these engagement meetings have been, uh, that we would like a full schedule of meetings. But I can't support the fact that, and I can't even believe we'd have enough officer time based on all the other work that they're doing. Uh, and, and I just think that that work's been done once. Uh, so I, I can't support the whole of that motion, I'm afraid. Can, can I ask members to um, skip it? Um, can, can I ask members, please? I've got Councillor Schofield, you wanted to speak. So um, I'm just going to change what I was going to say, actually, on the back of what Councillor Haslam has just said. So just because work was done back in 2015, we can't revisit it because the world has changed in eight years so much. It's all well and good saying that this work has been carried out. 
Eight years ago, I was nowhere near this. Now I am. I was not, I haven't finished. So if you don't mind waiting, that would be very helpful. Um, when I voted, I didn't vote against the scheme. I think you'll find a lot of people, so in response to Mr. Uh, Councillor Harrison, a lot of people don't want to stop at the scheme. They would just like the alterations. Sorry. I'm not against a scheme, and I will quite happily vote with this, even though I voted against my party at the last meeting. I'm more than happy to support this. But I do think that we can revisit things, and I don't see why we shouldn't. Councillor Hasman, I, yeah, I just really, time. I just wanted to put a point of clarity. I didn't say it was only done in 2015. I said it was started in 2015, and I wanted to, you know, so it's part of a considered strategy. There's economic reports that go through that were done in 2017, 2021, 2022, and they've even been updated this year. So there's a there's a track record of work being done, and that's the important piece. Uh, and, you know, I know it's really easy when you become a councillor for the first time to think that nothing went on before. But it's important, it's important that we gather from that information that's available. And that information was put there and it was considered. So that's all I'm saying, Mike, uh, is uh, I appreciate, you, you know, so I, I, I actually, I warm to the fact that you actually will support this because uh, I, I was disappointed that you didn't support previously. Thank you. Can I just make a comment myself? It would be nice if members were involved. Yesterday, there was a site visit. Not one local member was invited to that. Surely, we that represent the people of Harrogate and Knaresborough should be more involved in this than we have ever been. We've been told what a decision is and then asked to um, vote on it. We've never been actually involved and we know our place much better. In fact, before the executive meeting, I requested that the executive came out and walked the route so they'd understand, because many of the executive members live nowhere near Harrogate, that they would understand. I never even got a, re uh, a reply to that, and they certainly didn't come and look at the area they were making a major decision on that's going to have a major impact on the residents of this town. So I feel very angry that we the elected representatives have been missed out on this in a huge way. Right, can we, uh, right, Councillor Gibbs. I, I agree with you, Pat, that local members should be, um, should be involved. And I just wanted to point out that, um, I don't know if you know this, but you have been invited to a site visit there next week to do the gateway. I'm looking, any, Pat has, I'm looking at an email in front of me. Hi, Pat, I'm happy to meet on site next Friday. Well, I so. don't know when that was sent, but I... It was, I, sent, to, it was sent today, but just, oh. just, just to let you know. That's great. That, that, it was that, a point that, of clarity that... Not no. If, if you'll allow me f to finish, please, Chris. Um, it was just a point that I was agreeing with Pat that members should be involved, and I'm just, you know, reassurance to her that an email has come round um, that, um, that such a meeting is being set up. I just thought she'd like to know, that's all. Well, thank you for that. I will read the email when I get back home and while we're not in a, in a meeting, um, and we'll see where that goes. Right, if there's no more comments, can we move to a vote on this, please? Oh, Councillor Andre. Because I do believe I have a right of summary, if, if, yeah, if, if I on. propose. Uh, I just want to say, reiterate the point to Councillor Harrison among maybe amongst others, but certainly to Councillor Harrison, that this is not designed to uh, stop the scheme. <laughs> no, it is designed for a scheme to continue, because I do believe uh, we... N I voted for it, didn't it? For, for the original proposal, and I've always said there's some parts of this scheme that I find really, really attractive. One arch being one of them. I keep on coming back to one arch. Pat may sigh, but, it, but, but it's really, really important. And nobody's done so all about it in 30 years. And we need to start doing something about it. Uh, Harry Gutt's top crime spot. But, you know, I do sincerely believe 
that we need to demonstrate that we've listened to the voices of the people who came to the last meeting, the people who've signed this petition. And I think this is one way of doing it. And it also engages the public more, but it also engages us more, which many of us around here have said is what is missing and what we feel has been left out of the scheme. So that's why I'm proposing this, and I don't believe the time scale is unrealistic. I'm not asking the officers to do the work, I'm just asking for them to set up the, the working group, and as members, we can actually do, do, do the work there. So I'm entirely happy to propose this scheme with a lovely second. Can I just, further to what Chris has said, yeah, reiterate there, yeah, this isn't about trying to overthrow uh, you know, a, a motion that we already passed um, at the previous meeting. This is genuinely about looking at the specific concerns of individuals and seeing if ways, you know, that might be possible of mitigating and therefore bringing more of the public on side of actually supporting the scheme. And like, and like Chris says, of involving uh, a scheme, sorry, Philip. And uh, in involving the, the local councillors much more in that in that process. Councillor Hudson. All the people that want this scheme haven't necessarily written in. The population of Harrogate is more than a handful of, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm going to refer to it, but that petition has got signatories from South Africa and other parts of the world. Uh, and, you know, they don't, they don't even live as close. I mean, you know, we talked about the executive. The executive live a little closer than South Africa. Thank that, you. That may okay. be the point, Paul, I accept that, but it actually has got 500 plus yeah. names from for North Yorkshire, which is why we're debating it today. And we need, okay. we need to listen to those voices. I accept that everybody in Change UK isn't necessarily all 2,000 uh, Harrogate residents, but a fair proportion of them are. But the, okay. the question Can is, the population of Harrogate is much bigger members, than this, and just, and just because people don't complain members, please. isn't, sorry, but I, I, no, I think it's important. You know, just because somebody's not complained doesn't mean they haven't got a voice here. We only seem to be one, listening to one half of the voices. <laughs> no. I, I think what we'll do... Can I propose we take the vote, I, Madam Chair? Yes, and that's what I, just about what I was to say. <laughs> All those in favour of the proposal, please show. All those against? Seven, four. That's seven, four, so the motion is passed. It was eight, yes, yeah, sorry. So, Chairman, we'll then need <coughs> the names of the uh, five councillors who, who will be on the working group, yeah? Uh, can we just leave that to, to officers yeah. to right. sort, sort out the political proportionality and then ask for seat nominations? Uh, can I, can I thank Rachel? And Inchbod for bringing that to the committee. Thank you. Right, we're now to agenda item nine, area constituency committee ways of working. And I'm going to invite Daniel Harry to present his report. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. So um, I won't go through the report line by line. I'll just pull out some of the key elements to draw members' atten uh, attention to. So clearly looking at the new ways of working for this next iteration of the area constituency committee meetings, some of the suggested way forwards are to um, introduce mid-cycle briefings of a nature that's currently in place with overview, overview and scrutiny committees at the council. So that would be chair, vice chair and group spokes. They would meet um, in between formal public meetings of the committee. They are not a de facto committee meeting. They're a coordinating group that looks at the work program for the committee, uh, seeks points of clarification, and um, plans the agenda for the next meeting. They work very well in scrutiny, 
and I think there's quite widespread support for introducing these with the area constituency committees. There is corporate director support for the meetings. At the moment, this is um, a, a case of being able to unblock things. So it's envisaged that um, should an officer who's supporting the committee um, find they're not able to get the information that they need or that the committee is requested for whatever reason, then they can escalate the matter internally towards the corporate director. In terms of parish and town councils, um, it's envisaged that um, parish, and parish and town councils will be clearly be able to engage with you as the local member on any relevant issues, but also be able to um, engage directly with the community, with the committee, sorry, through the public participation scheme that's in place already, but also to raise any issues with the chair, vice chair, or the relevant democratic services officer in between meetings. In terms of scrutiny, um, clearly there is always the intention to adopt local scrutiny where it makes sense through the area constituency committees. Um, what we do need to do, however, is make sure that's coordinated with the six thematic overview and scrutiny committees at the council to make sure that the work's coordinated and it's complementary and we, we're not in a position where we've got um, different pieces of scrutiny work that might be at odds with one of an, uh, another or a, indeed tripping over each other. Escalation routes, I mean, clearly um, there are a number of routes by which issues from ACCs can be escalated. I think some of the, the comments that's been received from some members in the past, not necessarily here, has been about receiving reports to note. The comment I would make in response to that is just because a report says to note doesn't mean you have to note it. Um, you as a committee can come to whatever conclusion you want to regarding that report and make recommendations accordingly and escal escalate the matter accordingly. <laughs> Then quickly on to funding, um, there is, you'll be aware, £50,000 seed funding aligned to each of the area constituency committees. That funding is within the remit of the Corporate Director of Community Development. There is further work that needs to be done to come up with a robust framework for the allocation of that funding, because clearly, um, whilst £50,000 doesn't seem like a great deal, spread across six committees, that's £300,000 a year then, clearly for the duration of this council over a million pounds. So um, obviously there needs to be a robust system in place for the allocation of that funding, which uh, for which we can be held accountable by members of the public. Then finally, work programme. I, I don't intend to go through blow by blow section 12. What you can see is in addition to the matters you already have on your work programme, there's a number of others that are being suggested, uh, a mixture of um, particularly economic development matters and community safety uh, and highways related matters, annual reports, and then crucially um, looking at a number of other areas where perhaps it's not um, the best use of members' time to bring exhaustive reports on a regular basis to a formal meeting, but instead to circulate those reports in between meetings. And if members have any points of concern that they do want to then look at in depth in a meeting, they can be, arrangements can be made subsequently. So that's all I wanted to say on the report, Chair, um, but very happy to take questions. Has any member got any questions? I thought there might be something on how we're going to spend 50,000. <laughs> I was recommending maybe a party or a party. Thanks very much, uh, Chair. Um, I, I, under section 11, the funding, I have a proposal. I propose that we allocate uh, 25,000 to the NID Action Group, which are doing all this very vital work about the river quality water. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that they need that level of funding when it comes down to uh, training, buying of, buying of the appropriate testing kits, the analysis of those testing kits. Uh, and we also know that the work is urgent. Uh, only last week I had, or well, in fact it was only two days ago, I had uh, a, an email from someone who had received, uh, who, who had E. coli. Now they couldn't say where it came from, but their <laughs> child had been playing in the river. So I really think that this is a worthwhile cause and I'd like to propose that we allocate 25,000 to the NID Action Group. Obviously, whatever the process is, 
in terms of calling it off, etc. But I do think this is a worthwhile cause and it very much impacts on Harrogate and Knaresborough. Thank you, Chair. I don't know whether, Ms. Mark, do you want to come in and make a comment on uh, that? Just a suggestion, obviously, we, the, the, the actual formal process criteria hasn't been established for this yet in terms of the funding. So could I suggest that it's brought forward as a formal proposal to the next meeting with additional information, timescales, and, you know, exactly the funding requirements, just as a starting point to then say, you know, it can be considered by the committee in, in, re in relation to recommendation further forward. I'd, I'd like to go for a second and now in principle on the basis subject to on the basis that this this work is going to be a, a lot of this work's got to be done before we meet again uh, so I would like to sort of create uh, some sense of urgency over this thank you could could I check could I ask um, an interesting figure how was this 25,000 arrived at? Is it something plucked out of thin air or, or what have you, what's the basis of 25,000? <laughs> Please, because I don't usually, well, well, what's, well, yeah, exactly. There's before a bridge, all, you know, it, it, how, how did you come to this amazing figure, 25,000? So, so, so yes, yeah, so I would have put a mark upon it, and you know, uh, wouldn't have wanted to waste it. However, uh, it's to do with, and I can list. It's the laboratory analysis of diatoms. Don't ask me what they are, because I don't know. Uh, fecal bacteria and sampling by day. But th those alone are about eight, nine thousand pounds for those analyses. There's the water sampling kits. Uh, can I just say, we're not going to be debating this at the moment. Can I bring in uh, Daniel Harry, please? Thank you, Chair. So just again, to, to clarify, the, the process is not yet in place by which funding can be allocated. So it's not, in my view, appropriate to take any bids at this stage. I'd further suggest to members that obviously um, you are only embarking on the first meeting in this next iteration of the um, Area Constituency Committee. So you may want time to reflect on how the £50,000, um, should it be released, once we know what the funding mechanism is, um, be appropriately spent. So my uh, suggestion would be that um, it be noted in the minutes that that's the request from Councillor Haslam, and then once we have a funding mechanism in place, we can look at what the requirements are in terms of progressing a funding bid. I would also respectfully suggest that if there is a need for urgent funding, there is, of course, the member's locality budget which can be drawn upon either individually or in conjunction with others. Councillor Walker. So I, I was going to make that point, so thanks, Daniel, that we've all got locality budgets. W when we first started uh, discussing this, um, we said that we would work collaboratively, and that's what we, we need to do as part of this uh, work to make sure that the, the need is, is clean. Um, there, there is also... so. It's not been debated, but there is an amount of money that Nesborough Town Council has allocated for a project around um, a clean water status. So I think we need to make sure that perhaps the NID Action Group are aware of that. And obviously, as a council, we need to make a decision about how we're going to use that money. So that is something that will happen later down the line. Um, but it, it, it is about making sure the water is clean for everybody that, that bathes in it and uses it. It, it is a big, um, you know... Um, resource to the town, whether it's those people that visit, and equally from a wildlife basis as well, and we need to make sure it is clean. So perhaps we can consider some of those locality budgets and other uh, budgets that might be out there uh, and working collaboratively to make sure that the water is uh, of, of a clean uh, state for the residents and visitors. Thank you. Can I just say, we're debating something that really we shouldn't be debating at the moment. Can I ask Daniel for some clarification on... on the way that the process will begin? So work will be undertaken um, initially with proposals being drawn up with the relevant officers, so it'd be the corporate director um, and most likely the uh, Section 151 officer for the administration of that funding, then engagement with the executive member and the ACC chairs and vice chairs to work through the detail of how it be um, um, Yes, exactly, the, the, the processes that need to be done to apply for it, then clearly it's within the gift of each individual ACC to determine which elements that they feel are a priority. 
I think it is fair to say as well that the early thoughts were about uh, a quite a strong focus on economic development and destination development, so tourism and economic development. But obviously we can see um, how that stands with regard to the other priorities that arise through the ACCs. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I've got two more people, but we're not debating anything other than the fact that this is something that will come back to us um, once we've got the details. Councillor Wanakan. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate we're not debating this, um, and stop me if it sounds like I am. Um, I, that what has been proposed, obviously, I feel passionate about NAG and what they stand for and every other organisation that protects our environment and our uh, human life and wildlife. But I also respect Daniel's uh, comment because, in fact, if the River Nid is poisoned, then it will have an impact on the economic development of Nesborough and the Dales. So I think it, it, it does tie in nicely with that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Was Councillor Harrison, did you indicate? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Daniel, for the, the report. I think, um, I mean, I'm quite happy to support the, the report uh, as per the pages, and, uh, and I suppose, I don't know whether we have to formally adopt the terms of reference and suggested ways of working, but I'm quite happy to support them. And I, I note it, it's actually quite heartening. I appreciate Paul made a proposal to formally allocate funds. I think what, what's happened in practice is there's, a, there's clearly a strength of feeling to work collaboratively as a, as a committee, and, and it may well be actually, you know, the, the NID water quality is, is something that uh, when the terms of the scheme come forward, I, I, I suspect we'd be very supportive. So thank you, Paul, for putting that out on the, on the table. In the meantime, quite happy to adopt the terms of reference. Thank you. Councillor Mann. Chair. Um, I also think it's an excellent report and it's one which I can support. Um, in relation to, um, I think it's Para 8, Parish and Town Councils are um, future working with Parish and Town Councils. Obviously that's very important. Another organisation or committee or network, whichever word you want to use, that uh, will be um, at some point, possibly in the future, um, brought to Harrogate will be community partnerships. They're being piloted elsewhere at the moment. Um, so in the future, we may want to consider how we engage with them either as a pilot or uh, as a permanent arrangement. So um, just with that minor aside, I'm very happy to, to, to support the um, content of the report and also its recommendations. The recommendations ask the committee to review the terms of reference. Um, and suggest ways of working. Um, and certainly, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'm happy to support a motion to uh, um, recommend and, and support the report. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm also sorry, Chair, but I did want to add what I said. I think in this report there is something missing, and I would wonder if the committee would take it on board when it looks at 12.2 and themes and topics. There's no reference to climate change in there, and I would actually ask that that be incorporated in this uh, committee's strong recommendations. I can't propose that, obviously. I'm happy to propose that, Chair, if... I'm happy to second it if we are. Just to clarify, I think that the, the, the list of, of areas in the actual report aren't limitations on the things that would be coming to this committee. So it, um, it, it's just a suggestions that could include those particular areas, whether there's particular work ongoing or things that could come to this committee. And, and my quick question is the recommendation. Um, is that going to be annual review? So it's certainly the... Um, the plan at the moment is to review, um, broadly speaking, how this next iteration of the ACCs has worked after roughly 12 months. So a cycle of about four meetings. It will depend on, depending on the frequency of the meetings of some of the committees. Um, it is proposed that that's initially done through the uh, meeting of the ACC chairs and vice chairs, but obviously would take evidence from wherever it needed to in terms of coming to a view. Clearly, 
the ACCs are part of that local delivery, local responsiveness, and local accountability that's key to the success of the new council. And as Councillor Mann, I think it was referred to, over time we'll need to understand how the ACCs relate to the community networks as they become established and also work through the relationship with parish and town councils as well. Thank you. Hopefully we get a Harrogate Town Council. <laughs> um, right, um, that case, can we look to the recommendation and can we have, has it been moved and seconded? Yeah. Councilman? I'd like to propose that uh, this committee uh, adopts the report as a, uh, a very um, worthwhile statement of how we work and uh, can take things forward uh, in the future. So it's been moved and seconded. Can I go to the vote then? All those in favour, please show. Thank you. I think that was unanimous, thank you. Now we're on to uh, agenda item 10, which is the appointments to outside bodies. Anybody got any proposals? Shall I get to go through it? Do you want me to go through it? I can do the chair if you want yeah, to. Yeah, please do. Yep. Yes, thank you, Chair. It's, um, it's the um, report to um, appoint to outside bodies uh, on behalf of the Council. Um, we have two, two categories, category two, um, that operate across the geographic area of more than one electoral division. Um, category three, typically outside, operate across a smaller geographic area. To make it simple, they've been put into two separate appendices, so there's category uh, two and category three appointments. So um, those uh, particular groups are listed on there, and where there is um, a named councillor in, in black already on the actual um, uh, table itself. They've already been appointed by this committee, so they're already acting on behalf of the, the council in that, that capacity. Where it's in red, uh, be re they were appointed by the previous um, borough council, and there will still be a requirement, if possible, to seek a nomination for that particular group. Um, so we did send out a, a, a sort of request to have a look at these before the meeting, so I don't want to go into any detail and see, see, you know, go through a discussion around this. So if I just go through it, and, and if there's anybody who would want to be nominated to these groups, I'll just read them out, and if there is a nomination. So if I go through the uh, category, well, the, to the local bodies uh, first, uh, the Bond Area Quality Steering, Air Quality Steering Group, any nominations? Uh, I can't nominate myself, can I? But I would like to be. Can, can I? Oh, well, it's a bit. It's a bit. <laughs> All right. I'd, I'd like to nom. I'd like to nominate myself, please, for the uh, Bond End Air Quality Working Group. <laughs> I think Councillor Costello is there, happy to second or propose it. <laughs> I'll second. 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 Everyone in agreement. Yeah, well. Chair, can I just suggest if, 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 there's, if, there's only, if there's the right number of candidates for, for places, we just do them on block at the end. Is that not quicker? Right, yeah, that's fine. Yep. Um, Fairfax Community Centre. Yeah, can I just say, it shouldn't be me, because it's no longer my... Um, I was in as Harrogate, but, um, so I'd like to nominate Councillor Philip Drawbank. I'll second Who's that. a member for that area. Happy to accept if it's still there, Chairman. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's still there, actually. Just for actually, clarity, actually, actually that is a fair point. Yeah. It, it is now the Fairfax uh, Wellbeing Hub, and there is a, a. We need to basically get rid of that committee, but at the moment it's there. So let, let's him get yeah. rid of it. Just for clarity, th these are the groups that we know about, and we've just been passported on from the old district of borough councils, and therefore we're seeking nominations. There is a review ongoing this year to look at them as a whole, but at the moment we're seeking nominations to the existing groups that we know about, okay? Okay, that's fine. Anyone for the Harrogate District Community Safety Local Delivery Team? Can I, that does not exist. 
and I mentioned that a couple of meetings ago. Uh, it was abolished by Councillor Chambers, I think, at the first Eden and last meeting I, I attended. So there's no longer... A <laughs> I think the two were connected, actually. I think he was connected. So that doesn't know if need to go forward. Okay, we've now got the um, Harrogate International Festival Board of Governors. Can I propose Councillor Windass for that? I'm happy to second. I'm going to put a spoke in the works here, because I'd actually like to go on that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I do have quite a bit of experience in some festivals and events. I was a local government event, event officer for 23 years. Um, I've been, been involved in festivals in Skipton, uh, Kirklees Music Festival, Cheltenham International Music Festival, and run loads of stuff myself in my various. So I, I believe I could make a very useful contribution on that, on that board. I am proposing myself, I will do. I'm hoping I'll get a second there. We might have to go to a vote then. Can I second Councillor Aldred? Okay, then, um, can we go to the vote? Um, we vote Councillor Windus first. All those in favour of Councillor Windus, please show. Against? And there are those in favour of Councillor Aldred? <laughs> so Councillor Aldred has, has been voted in. Um, so we're now on to the White Rose Theatre Trust Board. I, I would like to put myself forward for that if possible. One of those places, please, if possible. I have a long history with the Harrogate Theatre. Um, yeah, one of its biggest advocates, work closely with them already. So I would like to uh, put myself forward for that. Okay. Councillor Harrison. Uh, can I propose uh, Councillor Windass for the other vacancy, please? <laughs> I'm happy to second. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, second Councillor uh, Schofield as well. Any more names to come forward? So we've got two, so I don't think there's any issues with that one. Jennifer Steyn Community Centre. Joint Management Committee. <laughs> Councillor Harris. I, I just wanted to, to say on, on this one that I have actually had confirmation from the relevant officer at Styan that that committee has folded. Thank you. Knaresborough Community Centre Committee. We've got Councillor Gosler on there. Yeah. Um, Nid Gorge Advisory Partnership. We've got Councillor Broadbank and Haslam at the moment. Yeah, can I, Chair, can I just let you know that it hasn't actually met since before COVID, uh, but I believe it's still active. <laughs> Councillor Broadbank. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Right. We um we it's on the list, so we need to have as it says six seats here. Six. Can I just can I just say I don't really think you need six people on there. If we just put as many people as want to be on there, then I think that'll be enough. Uh, yeah, uh, 
Well, yeah. let's see who's interested in it for the moment. Well, I'll, right. I'm happy Can to stay on it. And I'll second Councillor Warnocken. They don't, it just says councillor, they don't have to be a member of the committee. Right. We've got, at the moment, we've got Councillor Broadbank and Haslam that already sit on it. So, so are they remaining on it? Are they both remaining on it? Okay. And then we've got Councillor Warnocken. As long as it doesn't meet as often as it does at the moment. <laughs> We're going to make sure it meets every week for you, Ryan. With you coming along, it might ju we might just be able to put some energy into it. Um, Councillor Broadbank, were you, are you still happy to remain on I'm it? still happy to go on it. It would be nice yeah. if it met. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second, second Councillor Broadbank. So we've got Councillor Broadbank, Haslam, and Warnocken. Chair, can I just propose anybody that wants to be on it? Councillor <laughs> <laughs> Gasler. Um, can I propose Matt and myself to go on that, please? And, and can I second that then? That makes it easier. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy to second Paul's proposal if somebody says, uh, what, we'll either propose it or second it, whichever it needs. And I'm quite happy can to take up the final place on that to work with Paul and, well, and the guys. Can we just have clarification of the names? Because we've got um, six people at the yeah. minute. Mm -hmm. well, Councillor Warnocken, Councillor Broadbank, Councillor Haslam, Councillor Goslow, Councillor Walker. That's five so far. Yeah, yeah well, and I'll take, uh, uh, I'll take six if that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great to have volunteers. <laughs> right, Nidderdale uh, Strategic Partnership, which we find really weird. Should that be on this list for us? If we confirm it, Skipton and Ripon, I will take that on because. The, the next one, the Pakeley Bridge quarry, is also not on yeah. this one as well. That's correct. Yeah. And now we move on to Renaissance Nairsborough Management Committee. Oh, we've got we've got Starbuck Community Fund chairman there. Oh, beg your pardon, sorry, me. You, you've gone ahead, Philip. <laughs> We're on to. Um, where am I now? Need. <laughs> Renaissance Nairs Management Committee. Yes, I've got Councillor Gosler. Okay, Starbeck Community Fund. We've got. Good. Right. It says three seats. There aren't three seats, Chair. It's one. One seat. Three resident association. One councillor. The councillor, oh, well, residents as well. They all serve a three-year term. The resident association alternate. Um, uh, the councillors, when there were more than one councillor for the ward, Starbeck ward, it's, the, it's the, basically the Starbeck ward boundary that was there from 1995. And this involves three wards now, Kingsley, Hookstone, and uh, Starbeck, of course. Um, I have been on it, uh, for the, from, I've come to the end of my three-year term. So it's, it's, it's basically either Pat or uh, Chris who go on it now. Well, I've and been to my first meeting. You've done your first meeting, right? Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I propose Councillor Pat Marsh <laughs> for three years, three-year term. Thank <laughs> well, thank you for that. Okay. Well, to be honest, with that one, it was my my. I got the money in the first place <laughs> for the star pay, so it's eventually come back. Um, Anyway, the local fund, um, we've got a vacancy on that one. Councillor Gosler. Can I nominate, propose Councillor Matt Walker? And I'll second Matt Walker with that. Good. Councillor Harrison. And can I nominate Councillor Gibbs? Oh. Sorry, 
I've just checked the governance of the local fund because I'm managing the fund. And it was agreed last June that it would be a three-year term. So if there isn't a vacancy. So unless Sam doesn't want to carry on, he's still on the on the fund for the next three years. Yeah. Sorry, Chair. Sorry. Does, does that apply to me as well? Because I'm on it as well. But I was from the Harry. You're Bolland. from Harry Bolland, so that's. So, is that different? No, so, so you're 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 the Harry Bolland representative. Right. Okay. Yeah, but Sam's tied to it still for a few more years. Sorry. I'm happy to carry on, Chair, if, if that's the way it needs to be. Right, thank you for that. Um, now we've dealt with that one. Um, we're coming on to agenda item 11, which is update from the climate subgroup. Uh, oh. Just to confirm, there was another set of, oh, of uh, appointments for the local bodies, but if those members there that are willing we to, carry to carry on because they've been appointed already, the Prince yes, Henry's sorry. Grammar School Ockley isn't within this ward, so that no. vacancy is not considered, so that the appointments are already there. But just for confirmation, now we've just nominated and, and seconded for all of those appointments. Can we just have a vote to just accept them, please? All, of, all in favour, please, just for those. Just for clarity. That's unanimous. That's fine. Just for clarity in terms of the appointments of those committees, because we said we would do it at the end. Right now, it's the, the star act of tonight, which is yeah, Councillor right. Haslam. Well, it will be tonight. <laughs> it's Councillor Haslam. Could you please have an update from the climate subgroup, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll, I'm going to be brief because it's lunchtime. Uh, however, I will send some notes round afterwards. Uh, there, were, there was uh, uh, the first meeting I chaired last week, but sadly only uh, Councillor Marsh turned up. Can I just clarify? I turned up ten minutes later than Sunday. <laughs> 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 I was trying to get into that meeting so that the record came. Yeah. No. We ch we chatted for about an hour, but no, but I, but yeah. Anyway, it it wasn't personal. Uh, anyway, so look, here's, here's just some headlines that I'd like you, uh, I'd like the committee just to be considering from a, an environmental point of view. Um, first thing that's coming uh, up is there's a local transport plan consultation, and that's very important for lots of reasons, and it impacts on, it impacts on the environment. Uh, and I would be wanting everybody here, A, to be doing the uh, to doing the consultation or to reviewing the consultation and, uh, and, and input when we can. But we should also be uh, using the wisdom of crowds and, uh, I would say, encouraging our residents to get involved. So, for example, on the local transport plan, might be that there's not any major roads built in the coming years, but it's how those roads that we currently have are fit for, for example, public transport, which is something that we really will need to consider within the next 10 years. Uh, if there's more active travel, how do we, you know, is there a question around how do we, what are the road quality issues that we require for cycling ver versus, say, uh, a car where 40 millimetres is not bad for a car tyre, but it might be a little harsh for a, a cycle rider, for example. So, uh, and then there are other things like, you know, it could be, you know, and I'd like people to sort of even cite positive examples. So we've had park and ride today. Uh, we've you know, high occupancy car lanes, uh, management of side road access, HGV bans at various times, the use of car clubs, uh, car journey sharing. So I really would ask that you really give this some really important thoughts. It's not, a, it's not divorced from climate change and sometimes the danger is that we actually uh, silo some of our thinking. So I'd really like to encourage the committee and the residents to get involved. Uh, my second point is is about, and we mentioned locality grants, is to think about sources of funding, particularly for sort of say in what I'll call environmental things. We've all got our locality grants, and if every councillor were to put just a thousand pounds in or ten percent, then that would put ninety thousand into environment funds across North Yorkshire this year. And we also know that 
the council itself as, is still trying to fill that 30 million deficit. So, uh, you know, this is a good source for us to be able to contribute. Also, uh, you might come across commuted sums which uh, that might be sp specific for certain areas in your town. I've got some in, or in your area. I've got some, but I've got money that's been outstanding for several years. And if you can find uses for it, inflation is just going to eat it away or it's going to go back to the developer. So I would encourage you to look at those things. And we've got a very active community team in, uh, uh, in North Yorkshire, but the Harrogate bit or, that runs this. Um, as the, so the final thing I've got in terms of improvements is cy uh, cycleway improvements. We've got quite a few what I would call small tracks that if they were made, uh, let's say, rideable or walk push pushable for, say, uh, buggies and things, that actually would help link the town up quite a lot. And they might all be, it might be a lot of small interventions that actually has a big impact. And again, your locality funds might be able to be used, or the commuted sums might be able to use to help with those. Uh, and uh, there, uh, I appreciate that in your division, you may well find that you've got some of those. So I'd like to encourage that. Uh, finally, I, as, as climate change chairman, one of the key things I'm going to be trying to do is coordinate and collaborate uh, and, and get collaboration amongst all the different voluntary organizations that work on environmental and climate change issues. There are numerous across the whole of North Yorkshire, and I think they would benefit from being coordinated and of the opportunity to collaborate, because there's no point in reinventing the wheel if somebody's worked out a way of doing that. Uh, so, so that's something I'm going to be pushing as climate champion. I'm, I'm just looking at the mechanism to be able to do that. One of the potential mechanisms is there's going to be an award for the best climate stroke environmental initiative later this year. And it could be that you know everybody's a winner in that everybody who enters actually is onto a database. But I haven't got the firm, I haven't, don't know whether that is going to be possible, but we're looking at it. And then finally, uh, and it needn't be debated now, but if you would like to send me any of your thoughts, um, the climate change champion has, uh, let's call it a, a flexible job description. So if there's anything that you feel, and I'd like to take the wisdom of crowds in this particular, uh, again, if there's anything that you feel that uh, a climate champion uh, should be doing, then I'd be interested to hear your thoughts or read your thoughts, and also in particular how it might serve, best serve this committee as well. Thank you, Chair. Any comments? I just got one. Buses, buses, buses. You didn't mention that. <laughs> in terms of? of getting people out of their cars, etc. We need to serve our communities with buses. Yeah, no, I, I think on the local transport plan, it's about, uh, it, it's about uh, making sure the roads are fit for buses. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, and, you know, if people have ideas on routes and, uh, or, or wanting to put a, a, a bus lane down the uh, station gateway, then... Uh, uh, but we do need to look at how we give priority to buses in future and public transport. You're absolutely right. Only, only 3% of North Yorkshire has access to the train. So it's got, it, the solution is likely to be a bus-oriented solution. Well, the division I represent hasn't got a bus service. They have to walk quite a distance to get access to buses. And so that's a very large amount of people that are without a bus service. So that's why I'm saying if we're going to encourage these people out, they can't all walk and cycle because of age, et disabilities, etc. So we really do need to address the public transport. Right, we come to a gender item 12. <laughs> Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Chair. Um, this item's the, uh, the, the committee's work programme um, and includes a couple of updates since the, uh, the previous meeting. So we have the usual report, which gives you the remit of the committee and the work programme items uh, and, and what we can do with, with those kind of things. 
And then what I've added is the follow-up to the, the previous meeting. So we've had uh, Harrogate Active Travel Pro Strategic Project Plan and response from the Yorkshire Water to the questions from the committee, which came from the meeting that, in March. Uh, and again, an outstanding action there to uh, get a visit for members to built and treatment works to be arranged, and we'll be following that up. Uh, it, since then, there's additional work that uh, I thought I'd put on here for the committee to agree, which is the Yorkshire Water invited to send a meeting to the committee once a year, uh, particularly prior to the end of 2023, with sort of technical, technical engineer representation. The Environment Agency to be invited to attend a meeting of the committee to consider water quality in the River Nid, and also DEFRA would be invited to a meeting to consider proposals to help clean up the River Nid. Again, they were sort of outside of the meeting, we just want to make sure that that's formalised, if that's what the committee wants to do, and include that as, as a follow-up to, uh, to the last meeting. Chair, Councillor Gosler wants to... Councillor Gosler. Um, our working group, Clean Water um, Working Group, met last night, and um, we would still like to invite the Environment Agency to come and speak um, to the ACC. We also asked if um, the National Farmers Union would come and speak, and Danone Plastics Harrogate, whether they would also be invited um, to come and speak to the committee. I, um, sorry, one other item. The, with regards to the update from Yorkshire Water, um, they committed in the correspondence that Mark kindly sent round after our pr last meeting that they would um, give an update after six months. So I wondered whether they could be invited to come sooner to give an update. We could, of course, um, put together questions prior to that to send them so that they um, have the information at the meeting. I think, Mark, do you want to respond? Yeah, we, we, we'll take that. We'll follow that up and bring it back to the committee. This, that's the intention of the work programme item, to actually discuss those items, how you want them to be followed up and bring them back. So, yes. Councillor Haslam. Uh, Mark, I think w I was uh, on the call last night as well. I think one of the things that might help them not refusing us is actually to say that we see it as a constructive way of how we can learn whether we can, how we can help to improve the scenario or the situations. I just think that, you know, so we did agree that we would, we would want to invite them on, an, on, on a positive foot rather than a critical foot. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yep. Um, Again, follow-up items, um, further information from the Harrogate District Cycle uh, Action Group was circulated as well. And uh, an, another potential future work item uh, that was discussed at our previous meeting was bringing back a proposal. Um, and again, there's a proposal put in the future work program to be introduced by Councillor Chris Aldred, which is a wording from Councillor Lacey, who's not available to attend tonight's meeting. Yeah, I'm a very poor substitute for Councillor Lacey who was just sent us in there. Sorry, it was my, my personal email, but I know he's listening. So, so get well soon, Peter. Uh, this is just t tidying up, really, what we talked about when uh, we were talking about with Liz Mead at, from Stronger Communities last uh, meeting. Well, sorry, the March meeting. Um, and I'm not going to go through it all. It's there and on point four on the potential future work programme. But basically, it's just to establish a, a small working group which meets probably twice a year uh, just to, as a stopgap, really, to, if there are any gaps, particularly for the community and voluntary sector. We, we had a, um, a Zoom meeting, Mike, myself, Pat, and uh, Peter. Uh, Sam, were you there? I thought, yeah, I thought you were. And Sam, yeah, <laughs> you're not forgettable, Sam. So there's a basis for sort of a working group there, and we could keep it as that if you wished. I think we're proposing five, five people. It really is just to keep an eye on the uh, community and voluntary sector, which, which might fall through several loops with no HBC and no count town council as yet. So uh, I think it's just to formalise that group, really. And there's the terms of references there, which are obviously very important. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to propose we, we take that forward. We pr and I'll propose those five names as well, seeing as everybody's been interested. Unless anybody else wants to be involved, I'm sure we could get them involved.
Councillor Aldred's proposed. Is there a seconder? Councillor Scott, thank you. Sorry, just on another matter. Can I just ask for clarification on working groups? If we want, or if other members of the ACC are interested in joining working groups, does it have to come before the ACC or, or not? It's just some clarification. Is, is, is that item added to the work program and setting up the working group? Just clarifying that. Uh, well, it's yeah. The working group is added to the work program, and they will feed back into this committee as they see fit. I think they're not necessarily having having to report back. Hopefully, there'll be a town council, and these issues will be be uh, taken up by them. Okay, move, moving on from that then. Um, just some information here from working through the, uh, the work program report. Just for information uh, about historic work programs from the former District and Borough Council's uh, Open Scrutiny Committees. Um, this is just to give some indication of the, the areas that the previous Open Scrutiny Committee was looking at at uh, Harrogate Borough Council in terms of those particular issues. Where that's been taken on board by the new council is where it's got the relevant committee associated with it, the, the officers supporting that committee have been made aware of the interest of the previous open scrutiny committees at the, 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 the councils, and they will be prom you know, promoting or, or, or making the, those committees aware of the pre previous interests. So again, it's just those, that those previous work programs from those local committees, those issues have been taken forward uh, as part of the new council as well. Um, just on that, so how would I go about getting in touch with the relevant people with, re with regards to a certain programme on there? So is that relation to the actual issue that's well, on Well, because you've got sports pitches there, and I brought it up last year, and it's, it's even more prevalent now, relevant now, is the playing pitch strategy, which, um, as, as we know, you, you can garner, garner funds from 106 and also community funding, and it also... Is the bedrock all part of the planning process, I, I believe. It was seriously out of date last year. It's even more out of date this year, which I can easily prove as my son plays all the sports and I, I, I visit all these supposed grounds that are no longer used yeah. and there's one on my own patch. So who do I, how do I go about getting that if reevaluated? If there is a, a particular query from yourself, you want to address some comments to myself and I'll follow it up and come back with a response in terms of doing that. That would be the easiest way to do it. Okay. Gotcha. Can I just check, is that on the specifics or is that on the topic, general topic? This was on that particular one as a result of the interest from the previous Overing Scrutiny Committee and how that's been taken forward because again it's been given to the officers supporting that committee so I can discuss it with those officers and see how it's been proposed or otherwise in terms of that particular issue. And then if it isn't being taken up for or included in that work programme, then it can be re-evaluated as part of this committee in terms of a request to actually do some work around that. That's my suggestion. So again, it's just a way forward. Okay, any further comments? Councillor Gosler? Um, with regards to meetings and identified items, if it's okay to... Um, propose something with regards to the September meeting where we've got the Youth Council update. I think at the last time um, they presented to us, we mentioned it would be um, interesting if what they fed back to us was in relation to the items that we were discussing or at least on that theme. As we will be looking at sustainable transport and active travel, I wondered whether we could ask them in advance whether their feedback and views be um, particularly related to that topic. Thank you. Can we take that on board? Thank you. I have to say I've been attending their meetings, so yes, I'll make sure that that is brought up. Council Wall. So I'm, I'm not sure if we've moved on to this part, but um, we've got the... Um, the date of the next informal meeting, um, I get diary management is always a, a difficult one, but it does clash with the pensions uh, workshop, which two, two of us um, should attend that are on, 
on the ACC, so I don't know whether it can be considered in future so that there isn't a, a, a clash. This is a, a the, is this the informal briefing on the 29th of June? It, it is, Mark, yeah. yeah. I it's, it's a session that's a good, cut, cutting across all um, area constituency committees, offering them the opportunity to be involved. It's a date that we've been given, and it's to try and get the majority of members available for that particular date. I'm sure it's not the only session, but again, I will have a look at that and see if there's any flexibility on that. But I, it's something I was going to move on to, is, is w w how, how did... You know, it, what I did ask for sort of some consideration in advance of the meeting in terms of the availability, and obviously yourself isn't available. So, um, so, so, it? so if if it's online, if it could be um, recorded, that would be really helpful because I can then watch it afterwards. Thank you. I'm sh sorry. I'm I'm sure we can do something along those lines. But again, is just is the is the date available? Uh, uh, is every, are members uh, available for that particular date and time that we've got on the agenda for the 29th of June at 10.30? It's on Teams, it's online. Can I also make the comment that if I've got it right in my diary, Councillor Haslam and I would have a problem because we've got uh, a sport and leisure one at County Hall at 10 o'clock. Okay, well, I, what I'll do is I'll write round after the meeting and seek confirmation from everybody individually and, and report back on that basis. Uh, just a couple of more points as well. Um, as a matter of course, the invitation of the local MP is, is part of the, the, uh, the committee's work programme as well. Um, it does form part of other area constituency committee's agenda for every meeting or it could be on an annual basis. It just depends on what basis uh, you wanted to consider that particular item because there's some di discussion around it could be um, on every meeting to provide updates from this committee to the area uh, to the local MP or vice versa that way and get uh, in person rep, uh, you know, to a meeting once a year or something or it could be one, uh, a one meeting per year de dependent on time availability for or the local MP as well. It just depends how you wanted to see that particular item. Councillor Harrison. I, I, I think it's healthy for the, I mean, these committees were established to have a direct link with, with, um, with constituencies and obviously their MPs. So personally, I, I think it's useful to have on as, a, as an annual <coughs> slot, but that we should give the authority to the chair to move the date of the meeting, because I understand there's been a bit of a bit of hassle elsewhere in in the county, where somehow we've not given the dis the chair the discretion to align diaries. Well, you know, I, I think it's only sensible. To, I don't understand why that's happened, but I'd, I'd be happy to, you know, be pragmatic about it in terms of arranging meeting dates. We did it last year, didn't we? We aligned the diary. Any more comments, Councillor? Yeah, Chairman, just from my experience on the other uh, constituency committees sit on Selby and Ainsty, um, the invitation to the MP is on every meeting, and usually a report sent to every meeting, and then the hope is that at some point, one of those meetings, the MP will actually attend. So, I, I mean, I think if we're updated, uh, this committee was updated the way Selby and Ainsty is, it would be a useful con line of communication that has been referred to already. So should we have an agenda item on every agenda and uh, potential attendance once a year? Do members feel about that? I think there's a general support. Well, sorry, what's the agenda item then? That issue of the member yeah. So he has, he has to send a report every... We're invited to. Uh, but they do oh, have uh, so. Okay, fair enough. Councillor Walker. So, uh, I don't know whether I can do this, but I'm, uh, Arnold, I'm just wondering if you could perhaps enlighten this group, kind of the frequency on the MP of South and Ainsty's visits. Uh, I, I think we should try and kind of align. I, I don't want to sort of standardise, but I think it would be perhaps nice to maybe see the MP twice a, a year. Well, give him that opportunity if he wants to update us. And I just wondered how that aligned with Selby and Ainsty. 
Ch mm -hmm. Chairman, Selby and Ainsley have a item on the agenda that invites the MP to come to the meeting um, or, and, or, and or send a report. At every meeting I've been to, he has sent a report. He's never attended the meeting so far, though. And he has sent a representative, though, in the past. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a step towards com communication. Okay, Daniel, did you want to make a comment? If, if it's helpful to the committee, because I um, attend or involved with all six area constituency committees, so um, all the committees, um, I think with the exception of Selby and Ainsley, have actively invited the MP to attend every meeting, but then accepted the fact that clearly MPs are busy people, therefore they might not be able to attend. So where they're unable to attend, then the offer is, well, can you provide relevant local information? When they do attend, I think it's worth emphasizing it isn't um, uh, a, a, a member's, uh, an opportunity, sorry, to interrogate the MP. It's more about, um, the ability for the MP to flag issues at Westminster that are of relevance locally and for local members to flag issues that you want your MP to lobby on your behalf at Westminster. If, it, if it's managed in that way, my, my suggestion would be that that's when it works well. When it becomes more of a, a, a combative approach, which it can do sometimes, then it really does misfire. So in terms of maintaining an ongoing dialogue with the MPs, which was very much the intention with the creation of these committees, it's sort of the MP feeding down and councillors feeding up. Thank okay. you. Chair, <coughs> Chair um, could I ask Daniel, um, in the, the format, is it members of parliament to discuss, raise issues, and the other way around, of course, um, that the, the, the county, sorry, the council now, um, council issues rather than a general asking him what's going on in Parliament question all that sort of stuff. It's specifically for issues that the council are involved with and how Parliament can reflect. Is that, the, is that what they do? If it's helpful to come back, Chair, so yes. So the focus is very much on um, local members raising issues that are significant in their area. So you might get things, for example, around uh, sewage discharge uh, into rivers, that comes up quite regularly, clearly. Um, school performance, school budgets, highways condition, all sorts of matters locally that do need extra support nationally through national government funding and prioritisation. And by reverse, um, you'll get, for example, the MP might talk about the refugee resettlement scheme, might talk about work around climate change, it might talk about um, infrastructure funding that's coming through and the like. So. Councillor Gibbs. Thank you, Chair. Just, just in terms of getting the most out of this that we can as a committee, um, I think the, the reports, or offering, offering a report at every meeting is a good thing. I think we've got to be slightly realistic in terms of um, invitations to a meeting. I mean, we meet on a Thursday. I don't know if other committees meet on a Thursday, but unless it falls within a recess, um, the MP is not going to be here on a Thursday. Um, I don't know about how this committee works, but I know other committees have struggled with, with moving dates. So, so it may be that we have to look at potentially an extra meeting. I don't know if that would be a good idea that would fall within a recess to ensure that attendance can be made, because I wouldn't want, you know, we don't meet that often, do we? Um, and the chances are that most of them will probably not fall within a recess, and therefore it's unrealistic to ask the MP um, to be able to attend. So maybe look at an extra meeting or go to the reports, which are, there's no reason you can't, can't provide a report to each other. We, we did do that last year, and we got to an agreed date. It didn't suit me, because I was away on holiday. <laughs> Councillor Hazard. I, I don't know whether we've got the technology, but would we be happy if he joined us online? I, I think in person, if we can, and it really is difficult to do it, then we'll have to, yeah. Art Council. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to say that ne next Thursday's meeting, item 11 on the agenda, is to have a constituent MP, Nigel Adams, update to us. Um, 
I have to say, if it's any use, everybody on the um, Skipton, Selby and Ainsley Committee refer to him by his first name, whatever the party is. So there must be a, a good guideline as re how the relationships evolved before I joined that committee, because um, I don't think everybody in this committee refers to RMP by his first name. Thank you. Um, that's that's all I was going to um, update from the report. But I don't know if Councillor Gost wants to update from one of the working groups. Um, just further to the updates that I've given, um, Councillor Arnold Warner can mention that Mike Sco Councillor Mike Schofield would like to join our working group. Um, hence my question earlier. So if that can be noted, um, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay, right. We're now going to um, conclude the meeting. <laughs> can I thank everybody? Did you want to speak? Uh, can I just... Oh. Sorry, can I just ask, is it possible in one of the future meetings to get a representative from the police, like the police chief constable or somebody to speak to the area committee about um, crimes in, in the state of play in Harrogate and Esborough? Uh, well, crime and disorder, we're looking at ways to actually getting informed um, information to members to enable them to have um, a, a view about the things that they'd want the police to come and talk about. So again, we're looking at co consistency across the ACCs in terms of that kind of information, and then looking at ways to, you know, constructively invite the police to attend. Okay. And can I say you did it beautifully at overview and scrutiny in Harrogate, so we know you can do it. <laughs> um, right, thank, can I thank, first of all, Mark for putting up with us. <laughs> And, and guiding us through it and, and Giles for, for being there but thank you guys for being there and, and for all your input it really is highly valued so thank you very much I'll close this meeting and go and get yourselves some lunch thank you